Section zero of Beowulf. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Beowulf by Unknown, translated by John Leslie Hall. Preface. The present work is a modest effort to reproduce approximately in modern measures the venerable epic beowulf approximately i repeat for a very close reproduction of anglo-saxon verse would to a large extent be prose to a modern ear the hanes soaking text and glossary have been closely followed occasionally a deviation has been made but always for what seemed a good and sufficient reason the translator does not aim to be an editor once in a while, however, he has added a conjecture of his own to the emendations quoted from the criticisms of other students of the poem. This work is addressed to two classes of readers. From both of these alike, the translator begs sympathy and cooperation. The Anglo-Saxon scholar he hopes to please by adhering faithfully to the original. The student of English literature he aims to interest by giving him, in modern garb, the most ancient epic of our race this is a bold and venturesome undertaking and yet there must be some students of the teutonic past willing to follow even a daring guide if they may read in modern phrases of the sorrows of hrothgar of the prowess of beowulf and of the feelings that stirred the hearts of our forefathers in their primeval homes in order to please the larger class of readers a regular cadence has been used a measure which, while retaining the essential characteristics of the original, permits the reader to see ahead of him in reading. Perhaps every Anglo-Saxon scholar has his own theory as to how Beowulf should be translated. Some have given us prose versions of what we believe to be a great poem. Is it any reflection on our honoured Kemble and Arnold to say that their translations fail to show a layman that Beowulf is justly called our first epic of those translators who have used verse several have written from what would seem a mistaken point of view is it proper for instance that the grave and solemn speeches of beowulf and hrothgar be put in ballad measures tripping lightly and airily along or again is it fitting that the rough martial music of anglo-saxon verse be interpreted to us in the smooth measures of modern blank verse do we hear what has been beautifully called the clanging tread of a warrior in mail of all english translations of beowulf that of professor garnet alone gives any adequate idea of the chief characteristics of this great teutonic epic the measure used in the present translation is believed to be as near a reproduction of the original as modern english affords the cadences closely resemble those used by browning in some of his most striking poems the four stresses of the anglo-saxon verse are attained and as much thesis and anacrusis is allowed as is consistent with a regular cadence alliteration has been used to a large extent but it was thought that modern ears would hardly tolerate it on every line end rhyme has been used occasionally internal rhyme sporadically both have some warrant in anglo-saxon poetry for end rhyme see chapter one line fifty three and chapter one line fifty four for internal rhyme chapter two line twenty one chapter six line forty what gamir calls the rhyme giver has been studiously kept viz the first accented syllable in the second half verse always carries the alliteration and the last accented syllable alliterates only sporadically alternate alliteration is occasionally used as in the original see chapter seven line sixty one chapter eight line five no two accented syllables have been brought together except occasionally after a caesural pause see chapter two line nineteen and chapter twelve line one or scientifically speaking see if a c type has been avoided as not consonant with the plan of translation several of his types however constantly occur e g a and a variant stressed unstressed stressed unstressed and 
stressed and stressed and stressed, stressed and stressed. B and a variant, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed, or unstressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed, and a variant of D, stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, unstressed. E, stressed, unstressed, unstressed, stressed. Anacrusis gives further variety to the types used in the translation. The parallelisms of the original have been faithfully preserved, e.g. chapter 1, line 16, and chapter 1, line 17, Lord and Wielder of Glory, chapter 1, line 30, chapter 1, line 31, chapter 1, line 32, chapter 2, line 12, and chapter 2, line 13, chapter 2, line 27, and chapter 2, line 28, Chapter 3, line 5, and Chapter 3, line 6. Occasionally some loss has been sustained, but on the other hand, a gain has here and there been made. The effort has been made to give a decided flavour of archaism to the translation. All words not in keeping with the spirit of the poem have been avoided. Again, though many archaic words have been used, there are none, it is believed, which are not found in standard modern poetry. With these preliminary remarks, it will not be amiss to give an outline of the story of the poem. The Story Hrothgar, King of the Danes, or Shieldings, builds a great mead hall, or palace, in which he hopes to feast his liegemen and to give them presents. The joy of king and retainers is, however, of short duration. Grendel, the monster, is seized with hateful jealousy. He cannot brook the sounds of joyance that reach him down in his fen dwelling near the hall. Often and anon he goes to the joyous building, bent on direful mischief. Thane after thane is ruthlessly carried off and devoured, while no one is found strong enough and bold enough to cope with the monster. For twelve years he persecutes Hrothgar and his vassals. Over sea, a day's voyage off, Beowulf of the Geats, nephew of Helac, king of the Geats, hears of Grendel's doings, and of Hrothgar's misery. He resolves to crush the fell monster and relieve the aged king. With fourteen chosen companions, he sets sail for Daneland. Reaching that country, he soon persuades Hrothgar of his ability to help him. The hours that elapse before night are spent in beer drinking and conversation. When Hrothgar's bedtime comes, he leaves the hall in charge of Beowulf, telling him that never before has he given to another the absolute wardship of his palace. All retire to rest, Beowulf, as it were, sleeping upon his arms. Grendel comes, the great march-stepper, bearing God's anger. He seizes and kills one of the sleeping warriors, then he advances towards Beowulf. A fierce and desperate hand-to-hand -hand struggle ensues. No arms are used, both combatants trusting to strength and hand-grip. Beowulf tears Grendel's shoulder from its socket, and the monster retreats to his den, howling and yelling with agony and fury. The wound is fatal. The next morning, at early dawn, warriors in numbers flock to the hall Herod to hear the news. Joy is boundless. Glee runs high. Hrothgar and his retainers are lavish of gratitude and of gifts. Grendel's mother, however, comes the next night to avenge his death. She is furious and raging. While Beowulf is sleeping in a room somewhat apart from the quarters of the other warriors, she seizes one of Hrothgar's favourite counsellors and carries him off and devours him. Beowulf is called. Determined to leave Herat entirely purified, he arms himself and goes down to look for the female monster. After travelling through the waters many hours, he meets her near the sea bottom. She drags him to her den. There he sees Grendel lying dead. After a desperate and almost fatal struggle with the woman, he slays her, and swims upward in triumph, taking with him Grendel's head. Joy is renewed at Herod. Congratulations crowd upon the victor. Hrothgar literally pours treasures into the lap of Beowulf, and it is agreed among the vassals of the king that Beowulf will be their next liege lord. Beowulf leaves Daneland. 
Hrothgar weeps and laments at his departure. When the hero arrives in his own land, Hialak treats him as a distinguished guest. He is the hero of the hour. Beowulf subsequently becomes king of his own people, the Geats. After he has been ruling for fifty years, his own neighbourhood is woefully harried by a fire-spewing dragon. Beowulf determines to kill him. In the ensuing struggle, both Beowulf and the dragon are slain. The grief of the Geats is inexpressible. They determine, however, to leave nothing undone to honour the memory of their lord. The great funeral pyre is built, and his body is burnt. Then a memorial barrow is made, visible from a great distance, that sailors afar may be constantly reminded of the prowess of the national hero of Geatland. The poem closes with a glowing tribute to his bravery, his gentleness, his goodness of heart, and his generosity. It is the devout desire of this translator to hasten the day when the story of Beowulf shall be as familiar to English-speaking peoples as that of the Iliad. Beowulf is our first great epic. It is an epitomised history of the life of the Teutonic races. It brings vividly before us our forefathers of the pre-Alfredian eras in their love of war, of sea and of adventure. My special thanks are due to Professors Francis A. March and James A. Harrison for advice, sympathy and assistance. J. L. Hall End of section zero Section one of Beowulf translated by John Leslie Hall. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter one The Life and Death of Shield Lo, the Spear Dane's glory through splendid achievements, the folk king's former fame we have heard of, how princes displayed then their prowess in battle oft shield of shaving from scathers in numbers from many a people their mead benches tore since first he found him friendless and wretched the earl had had terror comfort he got for it waxed neath the welkin whirled on again till all his neighbours o'er sea were compelled to bow to his bidding and bring him their tribute an excellent etheling after was born him a son and heir young in his dwelling whom godfather sent to solace the people he had marked the misery malice had caused them that reaved of their rulers they wretched had erstwhile long been afflicted the lord in requital wielder of glory with world honour blessed him famed was beowulf far spread the glory of shield's great son in the lands of the daemon so the carl that is young by kindnesses rendered the friends of his father with fees in abundance must be able to earn that when age approacheth eager companions aid him requitingly when war assaults him serve him as liegeman by praiseworthy action must honour be got among all of the races at the hour that was fated shield then departed to the all-father's keeping warlike to wend him Away then they bear him to the flood of the current, his fond loving comrades, as himself he had bidden, while the friend of the shieldings, word sway wielded, and the well loved land prince long did rule them. The ring stemmed vessel, bark of the atheling, lay there at anchor, icy in glimmer and eager for sailing. The beloved leader laid they down there, giver of rings on the breast of the vessel the famed by the mainmast a many of jewels of fretted embossings from far lands brought over was placed near at hand then and heard i not ever that a folk ever furnished afloat more superbly with weapons of warfare weeds for the battle bills and burnies on his bosom sparked many a jewel that with him must travel on the flush of the flood afar on the current and favours no fewer they furnished him soothly excellent folk gems than others had given him who when first he was born outward did send him lone on the main the merest of infants and a gold-fashioned standard they stretched under heaven high o'er his head let the holm currents bear him seaward consigned him sad was their spirit their mood very mournful men are not able soothly to tell us they in halls who reside 
heroes under heaven to what haven he hide chapter two shield's successors hrothgar's great mead hall in the burrows then beowulf bairn of the shieldings beloved land prince for long lasting season was famed mid the folk his father departed the prince from his dwelling till afterwards sprang great-minded half dana the danes in his lifetime he graciously governed grim mooded aged for bairns of his body born in succession woke in the world war troopers leader herr ugar hrothgar and halga the good heard i that ellen was on genthea's consort the well-beloved bedmate of the war shiefling's leader then glory in battle to hrothgar was given waxing the war fame that willingly kinsman obeyed his bidding till the boys grew to manhood a numerous band it burned in his spirit to urge his folk to found a great building a mead hall grander than men of the era ever had heard of and in it to share with young and old all of the blessings the lord had allowed him save life and retainers then the work i find afar was assigned to many races in middle earth's regions to adorn the great folk hall in due time it happened early among men that was finished entirely the greatest of hall buildings herr ut he named it who wide-reaching word sway wielded mung earlmen his promise he break not rings he lavished treasure at banquet towered the hall up high and horn crested huge between antlers it battle waves bided the blasting fire demon ere long then from hottest hatred must sword wrath arise for a woman's husband and father then the mighty war spirit endured for a season bore it bitterly he who bided in darkness that light-hearted laughter loud in the building greeted him daily there was dulcet harp music clear song of the singer he said that was able to tell from the old earth men's beginnings that father almighty earth had created the winsome wolds that the water encircleth set exultingly the sun's and the moon's beams to lavish their lustre on the land folk and races and earth he embellished in all her regions with limbs and leaves life he bestowed too on all the kindreds that live under heaven so blessed with abundance brimming with joyance the warriors abided till a certain one gan to dog them with deeds of direfullest malice a foe in the hall building this horrible stranger was grendel entitled the march stepper famous who dwelt in the moor fens the marsh and the fastness the wan mooded being abode for a season in the land of the giants when the lord and creator had banned him and branded for that bitter murderer the killing of abel all ruling father the kindred of cain crushed with his vengeance in the feud he rejoiced not but far away drove him from kindred and kind that crime to atone for metre of justice thence ill-favoured creatures elves and giants monsters of ocean came into being and the giants that long time grappled with god he gave them requital chapter three grendel the murderer when the sun was sunken he set out to visit the lofty hall building how the ring danes had used it for beds and benches when the banquet was over then he found there reposing many a noble asleep after supper sorrow the heroes misery knew not the monster of evil greedy and cruel tarried but little fell and frantic and forced from their slumbers thirty of thanemen thence he departed leaping and laughing his lair to return to with surfeit of slaughter sallying homeward in the dusk of the dawning as the day was just breaking was grendel's prowess revealed to the warriors then his meal taking finished a moan was uplifted morning cry mighty the man ruler famous the long worthy etheling sat very woeful suffered great sorrow sighed for his liegemen when they had seen the track of the hateful pursuer the spirit accursed too crushing that sorrow too loathsome and lasting not longer he tarried but one night after continued his slaughter shameless and shocking shrinking but little from malice and murder 
they mastered him fully he was easy to find then who otherwhere looked for a pleasanter place of repose in the lodges a bed in the bowers then was brought to his notice told him truly by token apparent the hall thane's hatred he held himself after further and faster who the foe man did baffle so ruled he and strongly strove against justice lone against all men till empty up towered the choicest of houses long was the season twelve winters time torture suffered the friend of the shieldings every affliction endless agony hence it after became certainly known to the children of men sadly in measures that long against hrothgar grendel struggled his grudges he cherished murderous malice many a winter strife unremitting and peacefully wished he life woe to live from no liegeman at all of the men of the dane folk for money to settle no counsellor needed count for a moment on handsome amends at the hands of the murderer the monster of evil fiercely did harass the ill-plotting death-shade both elder and younger trapping and tricking them he trod every night then the mist-covered moor fens men do not know where witches and wizards wander and ramble so the foe of mankind many of evils grievous injuries often accomplished horrible hermit herod he frequented gem bedecked palace when the night shades had fallen since god did oppose him not the throne could he touch the light flashing jewel love of him do not twas a fearful affliction to the friend of the shieldings soul crushing sorrow not seldom in private sat the king and his council conference held they what the brave should determine gainst terrors unlooked for at the shrines of their idols often they promised gifts and offerings earnestly prayed they the devil from hell would help them to lighten their people's oppression such practice they used then hope of the heathen held they remembered in innermost spirit god they knew not judge of their actions all wielding ruler no praise could they give the guardian of heaven the wielder of glory woe will be his who through furious hatred his spirit shall drive to the clutch of the fire no comfort shall look for wax no wiser well for the man who living his life days his lord may face and find defence in his father's embrace End of section one. Section two of Beowulf, translated by John Leslie Hall. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter four. Beowulf goes to Hrothgar's assistance. So half Dana's kinsman constantly mused on his long lasting sorrow. The battle thane clever was not anywise able evils to scape from, too crushing the sorrow that came to the people, loathsome and lasting the life grinding torture, greatest of night woes. So he lax liegeman, good amid Geat men of Grendel's achievements heard in his home of heroes then living he was stoutest and strongest sturdy and noble he bade them prepare him a bark that was trusty he said he the walking would seek o'er the ocean the folk leader noble since he needed retainers for the perilous project prudent companions chided him little though loving him dearly they egged the brave atheling augured him glory the excellent knight from the folk of the Geat men had liegemen selected, likest to prove them trustworthy warriors, with fourteen companions the vessel he looked for, a liegeman then showed them, a sea crafty man, the bounds of the country. Fast the days fleeted, the float was a water, the craft by the cliff. Clomb to the prow then well equipped warriors, the wave currents twisted the sea on the sand soldiers then carried on the breast of the vessel bright shining jewels handsome war armour heroes outshoved them war men the woodship on its wished-for adventure the foamy necked floater fanned by the breeze likest a bird glided the waters till twenty and four hours thereafter the twist-stemmed vessel had travelled such distance 
that the sailing men saw the sloping embankments the sea cliffs gleaming precipitous mountains nesses enormous they were nearing the limits at the end of the ocean up thence quickly the men of the wedders clomb to the mainland fastened their vessel battle weeds rattled war burnies clattered the wielder they thanked that the waves o'er the waters had waxen so gentle then well from the cliff edge the guard of the shieldings who the sea cliff should see to saw o'er the gangway brave ones bearing beauteous targets armour all ready anxiously thought he musing and wondering what men were approaching high on his horse then hrothgar's retainer turned him to coastward mightily brandished his lance in his hands questioned with boldness who are ye men here mail-covered warriors clad in your corslets come thus a-driving a high-riding ship o'er the shoals of the waters and hither neath helmets have hide o'er the ocean i have been strandguard standing as warden lest enemies ever anywise ravage danish dominions with army of warships more boldly never have warriors ventured hither to come of kinsmen's approval word leave of warriors i ween that ye surely nothing have known never a greater one of earls o'er the earth have i had a sight of than is one of your number a hero in armour no low-ranking fellow adorned with his weapons but launching them little unless looks are deceiving and striking appearance ere ye pass on your journey as treacherous spies to the land of the shieldings and farther fair i fully must know now what race ye belong to ye far away dwellers seafaring sailors my simple opinion hear ye and hearken haste is most fitting plainly to tell me what place ye are come from chapter five the Geats reach herat the chief of the strangers rendered him answer war troopers leader and word treasure opened we are sprung from the lineage of the people of Geat land and he lacks as half friends to heroes unnumbered my father was known a noble head warrior edge theo titled many a winter he lived with the people ere he passed on his journey old from his dwelling each of the councillors wisely mid-world folk well remembers him we kindly of spirit the lord of thy people the son of king half dana have come here to visit folk troops defender be free in thy counsels to the noble one bear we a mighty commission the helm of the daemon we shall hide i ween naught of our message thou knowest if it happen as we soothly heard say that some savage despoiler some hidden pursuer on nights that are murky by deeds very direful mid the daemon exhibits hatred unheard of horrid destruction and the falling of dead from feelings least selfish i am able to render counsel to hrothgar how he wise and worthy may worst the destroyer if the anguish of sorrow should ever be lessened comfort come to him and care waves grow cooler or ever hereafter he agonies suffer and troublous distress while towereth upward the handsomest of houses high on the summit bestriding his stallion the strand watchman answered the doughty retainer the difference surely twixt words and works the warlike shield-bearer who judgeth wisely well shall determine this band i hear beareth no malice to the prince of the shieldings pass ye then onward with weapons and armour i shall lead you in person to my war trusty vassal's command i shall issue to keep from all injury your excellent vessel your fresh tarred craft gainst every opposer close by the seashore till the curved necked bark sh shall waft back again the well-beloved hero o'er the way of the water to wed her dominions to warrior so great twill be granted sure in the storm of strife to stand secure onward they fared then the vessel lay quiet the broad-bosomed bark was bound by its cable firmly at anchor the boar signs glistened bright on the visors vivid with gilding blaze hardened brilliant the boar acted warden 
the heroes hastened hurried the liegemen descended together till they saw the great palace the well-fashioned wassail hall wondrous and gleaming mid world folk and kindred that was widest reputed of halls under heaven which the hero abode in its lustre enlightened lands without number then the battle brave hero showed them the glittering court of the bold ones that they easily thither might fare on their journey the aforementioned warrior turning his courser quoth as he left them tis time i were faring father almighty grant you his grace and give you to journey safe on your mission to the sea i will get me gainst hostile warriors as warden to stand chapter six beowulf introduces himself at the palace the highway glistened with many hued pebble a by-path led the liegemen together firm and hand-locked the war burney glistened the ring-sword radiant rang mid the armour as the party was approaching the palace together in warlike equipments gainst the wall of the building their wide-fashioned war-shields they weary did set then battle-shields sturdy benchwood they turned then their battle-sarks rattled the gear of the heroes the lances stood up then all in a cluster the arms of the seamen ashen shafts mounted with edges of iron the armour-clad troopers were decked with weapons then a proud mooded hero asked of the champions questions of lineage from what borders bear ye your battle-shields plated gilded and gleaming your grey-coloured burnies helmets with visors and heap of war lances to hrothgar the king i am servant and liegeman mong folk from far lands found i have never men so many of me and more courageous i ween that from valour no wise as outlaws but from greatness of soul ye sought for king hrothgar then the strength famous earlman answer rendered the proud mooded weather chief replied to his question hardy neath helmet here lacks mates are we beowulf hight i to the bairn of half dana the famous folk leader i freely will tell to thy prince my commission if pleasantly hearing he'll grant we may greet him so gracious to all men wolfgar replied then he was prince of the wendels his boldness of spirit was known unto many his prowess and prudence the prince of the shieldings the friend lord of daneman i will ask of thy journey the giver of rings as thou urgest me do it the folk chief famous and inform thee early what answer the good one mindeth to render me he turned then hurriedly where hrothgar was sitting old and hoary his earlman attending him the strength famous went till he stood at the shoulder of the lord of daneman of courteous thaneman the custom he minded wolfgar addressed then his friendly liege lord folk of the geat men o'er the way of the waters are wafted hither faring from far lands the foremost in rank the battle champions beowulf title they make this petition with thee o my chieftain to be granted a conference o gracious king hrothgar friendly answer refuse not to give them in war trappings weeded worthy they seem of earls to be honoured sure the atheling is doughty who headed the heroes hitherward coming end of section two section three of beowulf translated by john leslie hall this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter seven hrothgar and beowulf hrothgar answered helm of the shieldings i remember this man as the merest of striplings his father long dead now was edgeveo titled him hrethel the gat man granted at home his one only daughter his battle brave son is come but now sought a trustworthy friend seafaring sailors asserted it then who valuable gift gems of the geat men carried as peace offering thither that he thirty men's grapple has in his hand the hero in battle the holy creator usward sent him to west dane warriors i ween for to render gainst grendel's grimness gracious assistance 
I shall give to the good one gift gems for courage, hasten to bid them hither to speed them, to see assembled the circle of kinsmen, tell them expressly their welcome in sooth to the men of the Danes. The door of the building Wolfgar went then, this word message shouted. My victorious liege lord bade me to tell you the East Danes atheling, that your origin knows he, and o'er wave billows wafted ye welcome are hither, valiant of spirit. Ye straightway may enter, clad in corslets, cased in your helmets, to see King Hrothgar. Here let your battle boards, wood spears, and war shafts await your conferring. The mighty one rose then, with many a liege man, an excellent thane group. Some there did await them, and as bid of the brave one the battle gear guarded. Together they hied them, while the hero did guide them, neath Herod's roof, the high minded went then, sturdy neath helmet till he stood in the building. Beowulf spake, his burney did glisten, his armour seemed over by the art of the craftsman. Hail thou Hrothgar, I am he a lax kinsman and vassal forsooth. Many a wonder I dared as a stripling. The doings of Grendel in far off fatherland I fully did know of. Seafarers tell us, this hall building standeth, excellent edifice, empty and useless, to all the earl men after even light's glimmer, neath heaven's bright hues hath hidden its glory. This my earls then urge me the most excellent of them, Carl's very clever, to come and assist thee, folk leader Hrothgar. Fully they knew of the strength of my body. Themselves they beheld me when I came from the contest, when covered with gore foes I escaped from, where five I had bound, the giant race wasted, in the waters destroying the knickers by night, bore numberless sorrows, the wedders avenged, woes had they suffered, enemies ravaged alone now with grendel i shall manage the matter with the monster of evil the giant decide it thee i would therefore beg of thy bounty bright danish chieftain lord of the shieldings the single petition not to refuse me defender of warriors friend lord of folks so far have i sought thee that i may and aided my earl men assisting me this brave mooded war band purify herod i have heard on inquiry the horrible creature from various rashness wrecks not for weapons i this do scorn then so be he alack gracious my liege lord beloved lenient of spirit to bear a blade or a broad-fashioned target a shield to the onset only with hand grip the foe i must grapple fight for my life then foeman with foeman ye fain must rely on the doom of the lord whom death layeth hold of i ween he will wish if he win in the struggle to eat in the war hall earls of the geat folk boldly to swallow them as of yore he did often the best of the wraith men thou needest not trouble a head watch to give me he will have me dripping and dreary with gore if death overtake me will bear me off bleeding biting and mouthing me the hermit will eat me, heedless of pity, marking the moorfens. No more wilt thou need then find me my food, if I fall in the battle, send to here lack the armour that serveth to shield my bosom, the best of equipments, richest of ring mails. Tis the relic of Hraithla, the work of Wayland, goes weird as she must go. Chapter eight Hrothgar and Beowulf continued hrothgar discoursed the helm of the shieldings to defend our folk and to furnish assistance thou soughtest us hither good friend beowulf the fiercest of feuds thy father engaged in hey ath olaf killed he in hand-to-hand -hand conflict mid wilfingish warriors then the wedderish people for fear of a feud were forced to disown him thence flying he fled to the folk of the south danes the race of the shieldings o'er the roll of the waters i had lately begun then to govern the danemen the hoard seat of heroes held in my youth rich in its jewels 
dead was heragar my kinsman and elder had earth joys forsaken half dana his bairn he was better than i am that feud thereafter for a fee i compounded o'er the weltering waters to the wilfings i sent ornaments old oaths did he swear me it pains me in spirit to any to tell it what grief inherit grendel hath caused me what horror unlooked for by hatred unceasing waned is my war-band wasted my hall troop weird hath off cast them to the clutches of grendel god can easily hinder the scather from deeds so direful oft drunken with beer o oh, the ale vessel promised warriors in armour they would willingly wait on the wassailing benches a grapple with grendel with grimmest of edges then this mead hall at morning with murder was reeking the building was bloody at breaking of daylight the bench deals all flooded dripping and bloodied the folk hall was gory i had fewer retainers dear beloved warriors whom death had laid hold of sit at the feast now thy intents unto heroes thy victor fame show as thy spirit doth urge thee for the men of the gayots then together assembled in the beer hall blithsome a bench was made ready there warlike in spirit they went to be seated proud and exultant a liege man did service who a beaker embellished bore with decorum and gleaming drink poured the glee man sang willem hearty in heret there were heroes rejoicing a numerous war band of wedders and danemen chapter nine unferth taunts beowulf unferth spoke up edge laugh his son who sat at the feet of the lord of the shieldings opened the jousting the journey of beowulf seafarer doughty gave sorrow to unferth and greater chagrin too for granted he never that any man else on earth should attain to gain under heaven more glory than he art thou beowulf with brecker did struggle on the wide sea currents at swimming contended where to humour your pride the ocean ye tried from vainest vaunting adventured your bodies in the care of the waters and no one was able nor leaf nor loth one in the least to dissuade you your difficult voyage then ye ventured a swimming where your arms outstretching the streams ye did cover the mere ways measured mixing and stirring them glided the ocean angry the waves were with the weltering of winter in the water's possession he toiled for a seven night he at swimming outdid thee in strength excelled thee then early at morning on the heathoream shore the whole currents tossed him sought he thenceward to the home of his fathers beloved of his liegemen the land of the brondings the peace castle pleasant where a people he wielded had borough and jewels the pledge that he made thee the son of bayenstan hath soothly accomplished then i ween thou wilt find thee less fortunate issue though ever triumphant in onset of battle a grim grappling if grendel thou darest for the space of a night near by to wait for beowulf answered offspring of edge thou my good friend unfair sure freely and wildly thou fuddled with beer of brecker hast spoken hast told of his journey a fact i allege it that greater strength in the waters had i then ills in the ocean than any man else had we made agreement as the merest of striplings promised each other both of us then were yunkers in years that we yet would adventure out on the ocean it all we accomplished while swimming the sea floods sword blade and scabbard boldly we brandished our bodies expected to shield from the sharks he sure was unable to swim on the waters further than i could more swift on the waves nor would i from him go then we two companions stayed in the ocean five nights together till the currents did part us the weltering waters weathers the bleakest and nethermost night and the north wind whistled fierce in our faces fell were the billows the mere fish's mood was mightily ruffled 
and there against foemen my firm knotted corslet hand jointed hardy help did afford me my battle sark braided brilliantly gilded lay on my bosom to the bottom then dragged me a hateful fiend scather seized me and held me grim in his grapple twas granted me natheless to pierce the monster with the point of my weapon my obedient blade battle off carried the mighty mere creature by means of my hand blow end of section three section four of beowulf translated by john leslie hall this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter ten beowulf silences unferth glears high so ill-meaning enemies often did cause me sorrow the sorest i served them in quittance with my dear loved sword as in sooth it was fitting they missed the pleasure of feasting abundantly ill-doers of evil of eating my body of surrounding the banquet deep in the ocean but wounded with edges early at morning they were stretched a high on the strand of the ocean put to sleep with the sword that sea-going travellers no longer thereafter were hindered from sailing the foam-dashing currents came a light from the east god's beautiful beacon the billows subsided that well i could see the nesses projecting the blustering crags weird often saveth the undoomed hero if doughty his valour but me did it fortune to fell from my weapon nine of the knickers of night struggle harder neath dome of the heaven heard i but rarely nor of white more woeful in the waves of the ocean yet i escaped with my life the grip of the monsters weary from travel then the waters bear me to the land of the finns the flood with the current the weltering waves not a word hath been told me of deeds so daring done by thee unferth and of sword terror non never hath brecker at the play of the battle nor either of you two feet so fearless performed with weapons glinting and gleaming i utter no boasting though with cold-blooded cruelty thou killedst thy brothers thy nearest of kin thou needs must in hell get direful damnation though doughty thy wisdom i tell thee in earnest offspring of edgelaf never had grendel such numberless horrors the direful demon done to thy liege lord harrying in herod if thy heart were as sturdy thy mood as ferocious as thou dost describe them he hath found out fully that the fierce burning hatred the edge battle eager of all of your kindred of the victory shieldings need little dismay him oaths he exacteth not any he spares of the folk of the daneman but fighteth with pleasure killeth and feasteth no contest expecteth from spear danish people but the prowess and valour of the earls of the geat men early shall venture to give him a grapple he shall go who is able bravely to banquet when the bright light of morning which the second day bringeth the sun in its ether robes o oh, the children of men shines from the southward then the grey-haired wharf famed giver of treasure was blithesome and joyous the bright danish ruler expected assistance the people's protector heard from beowulf his bold resolution there was laughter of heroes loud was the clatter the words were winsome whilst they advanced then consort of hrothgar of courtesy mindful gold decked saluted the men in the building and the free-born woman the beaker presented to the lord of the kingdom first of the east danes bade him be blithsome when beer was a-flowing leaf to his liegeman he lustily tasted of banquet and beaker battle-famed ruler the helmingish lady then graciously circled mid all the liegemen lesser and greater treasure-cups tendered 
till time was afforded that the decorous mooded diademed folk queen might bear to beowulf the bumper of erinning she greeted the geat prince god she did thank most wise in her words that her wish was accomplished that in any of earl men she ever should look for solace in sorrow he accepted the beaker battle bold warrior at walch theo's giving then equipped for combat quoth he in measures beowulf spake offspring of edge theo i purposed in spirit when i mounted the ocean when i boarded my boat with a band of my liegemen i would work to the fullest the will of your people or in foes clutches fastened fall in the battle deeds i shall do of daring and prowess or the last of my life days live in this mead hall these words to the lady were welcome and pleasing the boast of the geat man with gold trappings broidered went the free-born folk queen her fond lord to sit by then again as of yore was heard in the building courtly discussion conquerors shouting heroes were happy till half dana's son would go to his slumber to seek for refreshing for the horrid hell monster in the hall building knew he a fight was determined since the light of the sun they no longer could see and lowering darkness o'er all had descended and dark under heaven shadowy shapes came shying around them the liege men all rose then one saluted the other hrothgar beowulf in rhythmical measures wishing him well and the wassail hall giving to his care and keeping quoth he departing not to any one else have i ever entrusted but thee and thee only the hall of the dane men since high i could heave my hand and my buckler take thou in charge now the noblest of houses be mindful of honour exhibiting prowess watch gainst the foeman thou shalt want no enjoyments survive thou safely adventure so glorious chapter eleven all sleep save one then hrothgar departed his earl throng attending him folk lord of shieldings forth from the building the war chieftain wished then walch theo to look for the queen for a bedmate to keep away grendel the glory of kings had given a hall watch as men heard recounted for the king of the dane men he did special service gave the giant a watcher and the prince of the geat men implicitly trusted his warlike strength and the wielder's protection his armour of iron off him he did then his helmet from his head to his henchman committed his chase handled chain sword choicest of weapons and bade him bide with his battle equipments the good one then uttered words of defiance beowulf geat man ere his bed he upmounted i hold me no meaner in matters of prowess in warlike achievements than grendel does himself hence i seek not with sword edge to soothe him to slumber of life to bereave him though well i am able no battle skill has he that blows he should strike me to shatter my shield though sure he is mighty in strife and destruction but struggling by night we shall do without edges dare he to look for weaponless warfare and wise mooded father the glory apportion god ever holy on which hand soever to him seemeth proper then the brave mooded hero bent to his slumber the pillow received the cheek of the noble and many a martial mere thane attending sank to his slumber seemed it unlikely that ever thereafter any should hope to be happy at home hero friends visit or the lordly troop castle where he lived from his childhood they had heard how slaughter had snatched from the wine hall had recently ravaged of the race of the shieldings too many by far but the lord to them granted the weaving of war speed to wedderish heroes aid and comfort that every opponent by one man's war might they worsted and vanquished by the might of himself the truth is established that god almighty hath governed for ages kindreds and nations 
a night very lurid the traveller at twilight came tramping and striding the warriors were sleeping who should watch the horned building one only excepted mid earthmen was established the implacable foeman was powerless to hurl them to the land of shadows if the lord were unwilling but serving as warder in terror to foemen he angrily bided the issue of battle chapter twelve grendel and beowulf neath the cloudy cliffs came from the moor then grendel going god's anger bare he the monster intended some one of the earthmen in the hall building grand to entrap and make way with he went under welkin where well he knew of the wine joyous building brilliant with plating gold hall of earthmen not the earliest occasion he the home and manor of hrothgar had sought ne'er found he in life days later nor earlier hardier hero hall thanes more sturdy then came to the building the warrior marching bereft of his joyance the door quickly opened on fire hinges fastened when his fingers had touched it the fell one had flung then his fury so bitter opened the entrance early thereafter the foeman trod the shining hall pavement strode he angrily from the eyes of him glimmered a lustre unlovely likest to fire he beheld in the hall the heroes in numbers a circle of kinsmen sleeping together a throng of thane men and his thoughts were exultant he minded to sunder from each of the thane men the life from his body horrible demon ere morning came since fate had allowed him the prospect of plenty providence willed not to permit him any more of men under heaven to eat in the night-time he lacks kinsman great sorrow endured how the dire mooded creature in unlooked-for assaults were likely to bear him no thought had the monster of deferring the matter but on earliest occasion he quickly laid hold of a soldier asleep suddenly tore him bit his bone prison the blood drank in currents swallowed in mouthfuls he soon had the dead man's feet and hands too eaten entirely nearer he strode then the stout-hearted warrior snatched as he slumbered seizing with hand-grip forward the foeman foined with his hand caught he quickly the cunning divisor on his elbow he rested this early discovered the master of malice that in middle earth's regions neath the whole of the heavens no hand grapple greater in any man else had he ever encountered fearful in spirit faint mood had waxed he not off could betake him death was he pondering would fly to his covert seek the devil's assembly his calling no more was the same he had followed long in his lifetime the liege kinsman worthy of he alack minded his speech of the evening stood he up straight and stoutly did seize him his fingers crackled the giant was outward the earl stepped farther the famous one minded to flee away farther if he found an occasion and often away avoiding delay to fly to the fen moors he fully was ware of the strength of his grapple in the grip of the foeman twas an ill-taken journey that the injury bringing harrying harmer to herut wandered the palace re-echoed to all the danemen dwellers in castles to each of the bold ones earl men was terror angry they both were arch wardens raging rattled the building twas a marvellous wonder that the wine hall withstood then the bold in battle bent not to earthward excellent earth hall but within and without it was fastened so firmly in fetters of iron by the art of the armourer off from the sill there bent mead benches many as men have informed me adorned with gold work where the grim ones did struggle the shielding wise men weened ne'er before that by might and main strength a man under heaven might break it in pieces bone decked resplendent crush it by cunning unless clutch of the fire in smoke should consume it the sound mounted upward novel enough on the north danes fastened a terror of anguish 
on all of the men there who heard from the wall the weeping and plaining a song of defeat from the foemen of heaven heard him hymns of horror howl and his sorrow hell bound bewailing he held him too firmly he was strongest of main strength of men of that era end of section four Section five of Beowulf translated by John Leslie Hall. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter thirteen Grendel is vanquished. For no cause whatever would the Earl Men's defender leave in life joys the loathsome newcomer. He deemed his existence utterly useless to men under heaven many a noble of beowulf brandished his battle sword old would guard the life of his lord and protector the far famous chieftain if able to do so while waging the warfare this wist they but little brave battle thanes while his body intending to slit into slivers and seeking his spirit that the relentless foeman nor finest of weapons of all on the earth nor any of war bills was willing to injure but weapons of victory swords and such like he had sworn to dispense with his death at that time must prove to be wretched and the far-away spirit widely should journey into enemy's power this plainly he saw then who with mirth of mood malice no little had wrought in the past on the race of the earthmen to god he was hostile that his body would fail him but he lax hardy henchman and kinsman held him by the hand hateful to other was each one if living a body wound suffered the direful demon damage incurable was seen on his shoulder his sinews were shivered his body did burst to beowulf was given glory in battle grendel from thenceward must flee and hide him in the fen cliffs and marshes sick unto death his dwelling must look for unwinsome and woeful he wist the more fully the end of his earthly existence was nearing his life days limits at last for the dane men when the slaughter was over their wish was accomplished the comer from far land had cleansed them of evil wise and valiant the war hall of hrothgar saved it from violence he joyed in the night work in repute for prowess the prince of the geat men for the east danish people his boast had accomplished bettered their burdensome bale sorrows fully the craft begot evil they erstwhile had suffered and were forced to endure from crushing oppression their manifold misery twas a manifest token when the hero in battle the hand suspended the arm and the shoulder there was all of the claw of grendel together neath great stretching hall roof Chapter Fourteen, Rejoicing of the Danes. In the midst of the morning, many a warrior stood round the gift hall, as the story is told me. Folk princes fared them from far and from near, through long stretching journeys to look at the wonder, the footprints of the foemen. Few of the warriors who gazed on the foot tracks of the inglorious creature, his parting from life, pained very deeply how weary in spirit off from those regions in combats conquered he carried his traces fated and flying to the flood of the knickers there in bloody billows bubbled the currents the angry eddy was everywhere mingled and seething with gore welling with sword blood his death doomed had hid him when reaved of his joyance he laid down his life in the lair he had fled to his heathenish spirit where hell did receive him thence the friends from of old backward turned them and many a junker from merry adventure striding their stallions stout from the seaward heroes on horses there were heard very often beowulf's praises many often asserted that neither south nor north in the circuit of waters o'er uh, outstretching earth plain none other was better mid bearers of war shields more worthy to govern neath the arch of the ether not any however gainst the friend lord muttered 
mocking words uttered of hrothgar the gracious a good king he oft the famed ones permitted their fallow-skinned horses to run in rivalry racing and chasing where the field-ways appeared to them fair and inviting known for their excellence oft a thane of the folk-lord a man of celebrity mindful of rhythms who ancient traditions treasured in memory new word groups found properly bound the bard after gan then beowulf's venture wisely to tell of and words that were clever to utter skilfully earnestly speaking everything told he that he heard as to sigmund's mighty achievements many things hidden the strife of the walsing the wide-going ventures the children of men knew of but little the feud and the fury but fitella with him when such like matters he minded to speak of uncle to nephew as in every contention each to other was ever devoted a numerous host of the race of the scathers they had slain with the sword edge to sigmund accrued then no little of glory when his life days were over since he sturdy in struggle had destroyed the great dragon the hoard treasure's keeper neath the hoar greyish stone he the son of the atheling unaided adventured the perilous project not present was fitella yet the fortune befell him of forcing his weapon through the marvellous dragon that it stood in the wall well-honoured weapon the worm was slaughtered the great one had gained then by his glorious achievement to reap from the ring hoard richest enjoyment as best did it please him his vessel he loaded shining ornaments on the ship's bosom carried kinsman of wiles the drake in heat melted he was farthest famed of fugitive pilgrims mid wide scattered world folk for works of great prowess war troopers shelter hence waxed he in honour afterward herumod's hero strength failed him his vigour and valour mid venomous haters to the hands of the foemen he was foully delivered oft driven early agony billows oppressed him too long to his people he became then to all the athelings an ever great burden and the daring one's journey in days of yore many wise men were wont to deplore such as hoped he would bring them help in their sorrow that the son of their ruler should rise into power holding the headship held by his fathers should govern the people the gold hoard and borough the kingdom of heroes the realm of the shieldings he to all men became then far more beloved he a lax kinsman to kindreds and races to his friends much dearer him malice assaulted off running and racing on roadsters they measured the dun-coloured highways then the light of the morning was hurried and hastened went henchmen in numbers to the beautiful building bold ones in spirit to look at the wonder the liege lord himself then from his wife bower wending warden of treasures glorious trod with troopers unnumbered famed for his virtues and with him the queen wife measured the mead ways with maidens attending chapter fifteen hrothgar's gratitude hrothgar discoursed to the hall building went he he stood by the pillar saw the steep rising hall roof gleaming with gold gems and grendel his hand there for the sight we behold now thanks to the wielder early be offered much evil i bided snaring from grendel god can e'er accomplish wonder on wonder wielder of glory but lately i reckoned ne'er under heaven comfort to gain me for any of sorrows while the handsomest of houses horrid with blood-stain gory uptowered grief had off-rightened each of the wise ones who weened not that ever the folk troops defences gainst foes they should strengthen gainst spirits and monsters through the might of the wielder a doughty retainer hath a deed now accomplished which erstwhile we all with our excellent wisdom fail to perform may affirm very truly what woman soever in all of the nations gave birth to the child if yet she surviveth that the long ruling lord was lavished to herward in the birth of the bairn now beowulf dear 
most excellent hero i'll love thee in spirit as bared of my body bear well henceforward the relationship new no lack shall befall thee of earth joys any i ever can give thee full often for lesser service i've given hero less hardy hoard treasure precious to a weaker in war strife by works of distinction thou hast gained for thyself now that thy glory shall flourish for ever and ever the all-ruler quite thee with good from his hand as he hitherto did thee beowulf answered edge theo's offspring but labour of glory most gladly achieved we a combat accomplished unquailing we ventured the enemy's grapple i would grant it much rather thou wert able to look at the creature in person faint unto failing a foe in his trappings on murder bed quickly i minded to bind him with firm holding fetters that forced by my grapple lo he should lie in life and death struggle lest his body escape i was wholly unable since god did not will it to keep him from going not held him that firmly hated opposer too swift was the foeman yet safety regarding he suffered his hand behind him to linger his arm and shoulder to act as watcher no shadow of solace the woebegone creature found him there natheless the hated destroyer liveth no longer lashed for his evils but sorrow hath seized him in snare meshes hath him close in its clutches keepeth him writhing in baleful bonds there banished for evil the man shall wait for the mighty tribunal how god of glory shall give him his earnings then the soldier kept silent son of edgelaf from boasting and bragging of battle achievements since the princes beheld there the hand that depended neath the lofty hall timbers by the might of the nobleman each one before him the enemy's fingers each fingernail strong steel most resembled the heathen one's handspur the hero in battles claw most uncanny quoth they agreeing that not any excellent edges of brave ones was willing to touch him the terrible creature's battle hand bloody to bear away from him end of section five section six of beowulf translated by john leslie hall this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter sixteen hrothgar lavishes gifts upon his deliverer then straight was ordered that heret inside with hands be embellished a host of them gathered of men and women who the wassailing building the guest hall begeared gold flashing sparkled webs on the walls then of wonders and many to each of the heroes that look on such objects the beautiful building was broken to pieces which all within with irons was fastened its hinges torn off only the roof was whole and uninjured when the horrible creature outlawed for evil off had betaken him hopeless of living tis hard to avoid it whoever will do it but he doubtless must come to the place awaiting as weird hath appointed soul-bearers earth-dwellers earls under heaven where bound on its bed his body shall slumber when feasting is finished full was the time then that the son of half dana went to the building the excellent atheling would eat of the banquet ne'er heard i that people with hero band larger bear them better towards their bracelet bestower the laden with glory stooped to the bench then their kinsmen companions in plenty were joyful many a cupful quaffing complacently doughty of spirit in the high towering palace hrothgar and hrothulf herod then inside was filled with friendly ones falsehood and treachery the folk of shieldings now no wise did practice then the offspring of half dana offered to beowulf a golden standard as reward for the victory a banner embossed burney and helmet many men saw then a song famous weapon born for the hero beowulf drank of the cup in the building that treasure bestowing he needed not blush for in battle men's presence 
ne'er heard i that many men on the ale bench in friendlier fashion to their fellows presented four bright jewels with gold work embellished round the roof of the helmet a head guarder outside braided with wires with bosses was furnished that swords for the battle fight hardened might fail boldly to harm him when the hero proceeded forth against foemen the defender of earls then commanded that eight steeds with bridles gold-plated gleaming be guided to hallward inside the building on one of them stood then an art broidered saddle embellished with jewels twas the sovereign's seat when the son of king half dana was pleased to take part in the play of the edges the famous one's valour ne'er failed at the front when slain ones were bowing and to beowulf granted the prince of the inguins power over both o'er war steeds and weapons bade him well to enjoy them in so manly a manner the mighty famed chieftain hoard ward of heroes with horses and jewels war storms requited that none e'er condemneth who willeth to tell truth with full justice chapter seventeen banquet continued the shape song of finn and nath and the atheling of earlmen to each of the heroes who the ways of the waters went with beowulf a costly gift token gave on the mead bench offered an heirloom and ordered that that man with gold should be paid for whom grendel had erstwhile wickedly slaughtered as he more of them had done had far-seeking god and the mood of the hero the fate not averted the father then governed all of the earth dwellers as he ever is doing hence insight for all men is everywhere fittest forethought of spirit much he shall suffer of leith and of loathsome who long in this present useth the word in this woeful existence there was music and merriment mingling together touching half dana's leader the joy wood was fingered measures recited when the singers of hrothgar on mead bench should mention the merry hall joyance of the kinsmen of finn when onset surprised them the half danish hero naf of the shieldings on the field of the frisians was fated to perish sure hildeberg needed not mention approving the fate of the jutman though blameless entirely when shields were shivered she was shorn of her darlings of bairns and brothers they went to their fate with war spear wounded woe was that woman not causeless lamented the daughter of hoke the decree of the wielder when morning light came and she was able neath heaven to behold the destruction of brothers and bairns where the brightest of earth joys she had hitherto had all of the henchmen of finn war had oft taken save a handful remaining that he nowise was able to offer resistance to the onset of hengest in the parley of battle nor the wretched remnant to rescue in war from the earl of the atheling but they offered conditions another great building to fully make ready a hall and a high seat that half they might rule with the sons of the jutemen and that folk wilder's son would day after day the daneman honour when gifts were giving and grant of his ring store to hengest earl troop ever so freely of his gold-plated jewels as he encouraged the frisians on the bench of the beer hall on both sides they swore then a fast binding compact finn and two hengest with no thought of revoking vowed then most solemnly the woe-begone remnant well to take care of his wit and advising the agreement should no one by words or works weaken and shatter by artifice ever injure its value though reaved of their ruler their ring of a slayer they followed as vassals fate so requiring then if one of the frisians the quarrel should speak of in tones that were taunting terrible edges should cut in requital accomplished the oath was and treasure of gold from the hoard was uplifted the best of the shielding braves was then fully prepared for the pile at the pyre was seen clearly the blood glory burny the boar with his gilding the iron hard swine atheling's many fatally wounded no few had been slaughtered 
Hildeburg bade then, at the burning of Hnaf, the bairn of her bosom to bear to the fire, that his body should be burned and borne to the pyre. The woe-stricken woman wept on his shoulder, in measures lamented, upmounted the hero. The greatest of dead fires curled to the welkin, on the hill's front crackled, heads were a-melting. Wound doors bursting, while the blood was a-coursing, from body bite fierce. The fire devoured them, greediest of spirits, whom war had oft carried from both of the peoples, their bravest were fallen. Chapter 18 The Finn Episode Continued The Banquet Continues when the warriors departed to go to their dwellings, reaved of their friends, Friesland to visit, their homes and high city. Hengest continued, biding with Finn the blood-tainted winter. Wholly unsundered, of fatherland thought he, though unable to drive the ring-stemmed vessel o'er the waves of the waters. The wave-deeps were tossing, fought with the wind, winter in ice-bonds closed up the currents, till there came to the dwelling a year in its course as yet it revolveth its season propitious one alway regardeth world cheering weathers then winter was gone earth's bosom was lovely the exile would get him the guest from the palace on gruesomest vengeance he brooded more eager than on oversea journeys where onset of anger he was able to accomplish the bairns of the jutman therein to remember Nowise refused he the duties of liegeman when hun of the frisians the battle sword lafing fairest of falchions friendly did give him its edges were famous in folk talk of jutland and savage sword fury seized in its clutches bold mooded finn where he bowed in his palace when the gruesome grapple of gulaf and oslaf had mournfully mentioned the mere journey over for sorrows half blamed him the flickering spirit could not bide in his bosom. Then the building was covered with corpses of foemen, and Finn too was slaughtered, the king with his comrades, and the queen made a prisoner. The troops of the shieldings bore to their vessels all that the land king had in his palace, such trinkets and treasures they took as, on searching, at Finn's they could find. They ferried to Daneland the excellent woman on oversea journey, led her to their land folk. The lay was concluded, the glee man's recital. Shouts again rose then, vengefully resounded. Bearers then offered wine from wonder vats. While Theo advanced then, going neath gold crown, where the good ones were seated, uncle and nephew. Their peace was yet mutual, true each to the other and Unferth the spokesman sat at the feet of the lord of the shieldings. Each trusted his spirit that his mood was courageous, though at fight he had failed in faith to his kinsmen. Said the queen of the shieldings, My lord and protector, treasure bestower, take thou this beaker, joyance attend thee, gold friend of heroes, and greet thou the Geat men with gracious responses, so ought one to do. Be kind to the Geat men, in gifts not niggly. An ear and afar now peace thou enjoyest. Report hath informed me thou'lt have for a bairn the battle brave hero. Now is Herod cleansed, bring palace gleaming. Give while thou mayest many rewards, and bequeath to thy kinsmen kingdom and people, on wending thy way to the wield of splendour. I know good Hrothulf that the noble young troopers he'll care for an honour lord of the shieldings if earth joys thou endest earlier than he doth i reckon that recompense he'll render with kindness our offspring an issue if that all he remember what favours of yore when he yet was an infant we awarded to him for his worship and pleasure then she turned to the bench where her sons were carousing hrethic and Shrothmund, and the hero's offspring the war young together there the good one was sitting twixt the brothers twain beowulf geatman end of section six section seven of beowulf translated by john leslie hall 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 19 Beowulf Receives Further Honor. A beaker was born him, and biding to quaff it graciously given, and gold that was twisted pleasantly proffered, a pair of arm jewels, rings and corslet, of collars the greatest I have heard of neath heaven. Of heroes not any more splendid from jewels have I heard neath the welkin, since hammer bore off the Brosingman's necklace, the bracteats and jewels, from the bright shining city, or Menrick's cunning craftiness fled from, chose gain everlasting. Geatish Hialak, grandson of Swerting, last had this jewel when tramping neath banner the treasure he guarded, the field spoiled defended. Fate off carried him when for deeds of daring he endured tribulation, hate from the Frisians. The ornaments bear he o'er the cup of the currents, costly gem treasures, mighty folk leader, he fell neath his target. The corpse of the king then came into charge of the race of the frank men, the male shirt and collar. Warm and less noble plundered the fallen, when the fight was finished. The folk of the Geat men, the field of the dead held in possession. The choicest of mead halls with cheering resounded, while Theo discoursed, the war troop addressed she. This collar enjoy thou, Beowulf worthy, young man in safety, and use thou this armour, gems of the people, and prosper thou fully. Show thyself sturdy, and be to these liegemen mild with instruction. I'll mind thy requital. Thou hast brought it to pass that far and near, forever and ever, earth men shall honour thee, even so widely as ocean surroundeth the blustering bluffs. Be, while thou livest, a wealth-blessed athling. I wish thee most truly jewels and treasure. Be kind to my son, thou living in joyance. Here each of the nobles is true unto other, gentle in spirit, loyal to leader. The liegemen are peaceful, the war troops ready, well drunken heroes, do as I bid ye. Then she went to the settle. There was choicest of banquets, wine drank the heroes. Weird they knew not, destiny cruel, as to many an earl-man early it happened, when evening had come and Hrothgar had parted, off to his manor, the mighty to slumber. Warriors unnumbered warded the building, as erst they did often, the ale settled bared they, t'was covered all over with beds and pillows. Doomed unto death, down to his slumber, bowed then a beer thane. Their battle shields placed they, bright shining targets up by their heads then. O'er the atheling on ale bench, t'was easy to see their battle high helmet, burny of ring mail, and mighty war spear. T'was the want of that people to constantly keep them equipped for the battle at home or marching, in either condition, at seasons just such as necessity ordered, as best for their ruler, that people was worthy. Chapter 20 The Mother of Grendel They sank then to slumber. With sorrow one paid for his evening repose, it was often betide them while Grendel was holding the gold-bedecked palace, ill deeds performing, till his end overtook him, death for his sins. It was seen very clearly, known unto earth folk, that still an avenger outlived the loathed one, long since the sorrow caused by the struggle, the mother of Grendel, devil-shaped woman, her woe ever minded, who was held to inhabit the horrible waters, the cold flowing currents, after Cain had become a slayer with edges to his one only brother the son of his sire. He sat out then banished, marked as a murderer, man joys avoiding, lived in the desert. Then demons unnumbered, fate sent awoke, one of them Grendel, sword cursed, hateful, who at Herod met with a man that was watching, waiting the struggle, where a horrid one held him, with hand grapple sturdy. Nay the less he minded the might of his body, the glorious gift God had allowed him, and folk ruling father's favour relied on, his help and his comfort. So he conquered the foeman, the hell spirit humbled. The unhappy departed then, reaved of his joyance, 
journeying to death haunts foe man of man his mother moreover eager and gloomy was anxious to go on her mournful mission mindful of vengeance for the death of her son she came then to herat where the armadane earlmen all through the building were lying in slumber soon there became then returned to the nobles when the mother of grendel entered the folk hall the fear was less grievous by even so much as the vigour of maidens or strength of woman by warrior is reckoned when well carved weapon worked with the hammer blade very bloody brave with its edges strikes down the boar sign that stands on the helmet then the hard-edged weapon was heaved in the building the brand o'er the benches broad linens many hand fast were lifted for helmet he recked not for armour net broad whom terror laid hold of she went then hastily outward would get her her life for to save when some one did spy her soon she had grappled one of the athelings fast and firmly when fen would she hide her that one to hrothgar was liefest of heroes in rank of retainer where waters encircle a mighty shield warrior whom she murdered at slumber a broad famed battle knight beowulf was absent but another apartment was erstwhile devoted to the glory decked geat man when gold was distributed there was hubbub in herat the hand that was famous she grasped in its gore grief was renewed then in homes and houses twas no happy arrangement in both of the quarters to barter and purchase with the lives of their friends then the well-aged ruler the grey-headed war thane was woeful in spirit when his long-trusted liegeman lifeless he knew of his dearest one gone quick from a room was beowulf brought brave and triumphant as day was dawning in the dusk of the morning went then that earlman champion noble came with comrades where the clever one bided where the god all gracious would grant him a respite after the woe he had suffered the war-worthy hero with a troop of retainers trod then the pavement the hall building groaned till he greeted the wise one the earl of the ingwins asked if the knight had fully refreshed him as fain he would have it chapter twenty one hrothgar's account of the monsters hrothgar rejoined helm of the shieldings ask not of joints grief is renewed to the folk of the danemen Dead is Ashhera, Yeoman lad's brother, older than he, my true-hearted counsellor, trusty adviser, shoulder companion, when fighting in battle our heads we protected, when troopers were clashing, and heroes were dashing. Such an earl should be ever an erstworthy atheling, as Ashhera proved him. The flickering death spirit became in Herut his hand-to-hand -hand murderer, I cannot tell whither the cruel one turned in the carcass exulting, by cramming discovered. The quarrel she wreaked then, that last night agone Grendel thou kiltst, in gruesomest manner, with grim holding clutches, since too long he had lessened my liege troop and wasted my folk men so foully. He fell in the battle with forfeit of life, and another has followed, a mighty crime worker, her kinsman avenging and henceforth hath established her hatred and yielding as it well may appear to many a liegeman who mourneth in spirit the treasure bestower her heavy heart sorrow the hand is now lifeless which availed you in every wish that you cherished land people heard i liege men this saying dwellers in halls they had seen very often a pair of such mighty march driding creatures far dwelling spirits holding the moorlands one of them wore as well they might notice the image of woman the other one wretched in guise of a man wandered in exile except he was huger than any of earthmen earth-dwelling people entitled him grendel in days of yore they know not their father where ill-going spirits any were born him ever before they guard the wolf coverts lands inaccessible wind-beaten nesses fearfullest fen deeps where a flood from the mountains neath mists of the nesses netherward rattles the stream under earth 
not far is it henceward measured by mile lengths that the mere water standeth which forest hang over with frost whiting covered a firm rooted forest the floods overshadow there ever at night one an ill-meaning portent a fire flood may see mong children of men none liveth so wise that what of the bottom though harassed by hounds the heath stepper seek for fly to the forest firm antlered he dear spurred from afar his spirit he yieldeth his life on the shore ere in he will venture to cover his head uncanny the places thence upward ascendeth the surging of waters wan to the welkin when the wind is stirring the weather's unpleasing till the air groweth gloomy and the heavens lower now is help to be gotten from thee and thee only the abode thou knowst not the dangerous place where thou art able to meet with the sin-laden hero seek if thou darest for the feud i will fully fee thee with money with old-time treasure as erstwhile i did thee with well-twisted jewels if away thou shalt get thee End of section seven. Section eight of Beowulf, translated by John Leslie Hall. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter twenty two. Beowulf seeks Grendel's mother. Beowulf answered, Edgtheo's son, Grieve not, O wise one for each it is better his friend to avenge than with venomance wail him each of us must the end day abide of his earthly existence who was able accomplish glory ere death to battle vain noble lifeless lying does at last most fitting arise o king quick let us hasten to look at the footprint of the kinsman of grendel i promise thee this now to his place he'll escape not to embrace of the earth nor to mountainous forest nor to depths of the ocean wherever he wanders practise thou now patient endurance of each of thy sorrows as i hope for thee soothly then up sprang the old one the all-wielder thanked he ruler almighty that the man had outspoken then for hrothgar a war-horse was decked with a bridle curly-maned courser the clever folk leader stately proceeded stepped then an earl troop of lidden wood bearers her footprints were seen then widely in wood paths her way o'er the bottoms where she far away fared o'er fen country murky bore away breathless the best of retainers who pondered with hrothgar the welfare of country the son of the athelings then went o'er the stony declivitous cliffs the close covered passes narrow passages paths unfrequented nesses abrupt nicker haunts many one of a few of wise mooded heroes he onward advanced to view the surroundings till he found unawares woods of the mountain o'er hall stones hanging halts wood and joyful the water stood under welling and glory twas irksome in spirit to all of the dane men friends of the shieldings to many a liege man sad to be suffered a sorrow and little to each of the earl men when to ash Hera's head they came on the cliff the current was seething with blood and with gore the troopers gazed on it the horn anon sang the battle song ready the troop were all seated they saw along the water then many a serpent mere dragons wondrous trying the waters knickers are lying on the cliffs of the nesses which at noonday full often go on the sea deeps their sorrowful journey wild beasts and worm kind away then they hastened hot mooded hateful they heard the great clamour the war trumpet winding one did the gayet prince sunder from earth joys with arrow from bowstring from his sea struggle tore him that the trusty war missile pierced to his vitals he proved in the currents less doughty at swimming whom death had oft carried soon in the waters the wonderful swimmer was straightened most sorely with sword-pointed boar spears pressed in the battle and pulled to the cliff edge the liegemen then looked on the loath-fashioned stranger beowulf donned then his battle equipments 
care little for life inlaid most ample the hand-woven corslet which could cover his body must the wave deeps explore that war might be powerless to harm the great hero and the hating one's grasp might not peril his safety his head was protected by the light flashing helmet that should mix with the bottoms trying the eddies treasure emblazoned encircled with jewels as in seasons long past the weapon smith worked it wondrously made it with swine bodies fashioned it that thence forward no longer brand might bite it and battle sword hurt it and that was not least of helpers in prowess that hrothgar's spokesman had lent him when straitened and the hilted hand-sword was hrunthing entitled old and most excellent among all of the treasures its blade was of iron blotted with poison hardened with gore it failed not in battle any hero under heaven in hand who it brandished who ventured to take the terrible journeys the battlefield sought not the earliest occasion that deeds of daring twas destined to accomplish edgelaf's kinsman minded not soothly exulting in strength what erst he had spoken drunken with wine when the weapon he lent to a sword hero bolder himself did not venture neath the strife of the currents his life to endanger to fame deeds perform there he forfeited glory repute for his strength not so with the other when he clad in his corslet had equipped him for battle chapter twenty three beowulf's fight with grendel's mother beowulf spake edgetheus son recall now o famous kinsman of half dana prince very prudent now to part i am ready gold friend of earlmen what erst we agreed on should i lay down my life in lending thee assistance when my earth joys were over thou wouldst evermore serve me instead of a father my faithful thane men my trusty retainers protect thou and care for fall i in battle and hrothgar beloved send unto hialak the high-valued jewels thou to me hast allotted the lord of the geat men may perceive from the gold the hrethling may see it when he looks on the jewels that a gem giver found i good over measure enjoyed him while able and the ancient heirloom unfair permit thou the famed one to have the heavy sword splendid the hard-edged weapon with hunting to aid me i shall gain me glory or grim death shall take me the atheling of geat men uttered these words and heroic did hasten not any rejoinder was willing to wait for the wave current swallowed the doughty in battle then a day's length elapsed ere he was able to see the sea at its bottom early she found them who fifty of winters the course of the currents kept in her fury grisly and greedy at the grim one's dominion some one of men from above was exploring forth she did grab them grappled the warrior with horrible clutches yet no sooner she injured his body unscathed the burnie outguarded that she proved but powerless to pierce through the armour the limb mail locked with loath grabbing fingers the sea wolf bare then when bottomward came she the ring prince homeward that he after was powerless he had daring to do it to deal with his weapons but many a mere beast tormented him swimming flood beasts no few with fierce biting tusks did break through his burnie the brave one pursued they the earl then discovered he was down in some cavern where no water whatever anywhere eyes harmed him and the clutch of the current could not annure him since the roofed hall prevented brightness a gleaming firelight saw he flashing resplendent the good one saw then the sea bottom's monster the mighty mere woman he made a great onset with weapon of battle his hand not desisted from striking that war-blade struck on her head then a battle-song greedy the stranger perceived then the song would not bite her life would not injure but the falchion failed the folk prince when straitened erst had it often onsets encountered oft cloven the helmet the fated one's armour 
twas the first time that ever the excellent jewel had failed of its fame firm mooded after not heedless of valour but mindful of glory was he a lax kinsman the hero chief angry cast then his carved sword covered with jewels that it lay on the earth hard and steel pointed he hoped in his strength his hand grappled sturdy so any must act whenever he thinketh to gain him in battle glory and ending and is reckless of living the lord of the war gaets he shrank not from battle seized by the shoulder the mother of grendel then mighty in struggle swung he his enemy since his anger was kindled that she fell to the floor the furious grapple she gave him requital early thereafter and stretched out to grab him the strongest of warriors faint mooded stumbled till he fell in his traces foot-going champion then she sat on the hall guest and wielded her war-knife wide-bladed flashing for her son would take vengeance her one only bairn his breast armour woven bowed on his shoulder it guarded his life the entrance defended gainst sword point and edges edge they of sun there had fatally journeyed champion of gaet men in the arms of the ocean had the armour not given close woven corslet comfort and succour and had god most holy not awarded the victory all-knowing lord easily did heaven's ruler most righteous arrange it with justice uprose he erect ready for battle chapter twenty four beowulf is double conqueror then he saw mid the war gems a weapon of victory an ancient giant sword of edges a doughty glory of warriors of weapons twas choicest only twas larger than any man else was able to bear to the battle encounter the good and splendid work of the giants he grasped then the sword hilt knight of the shieldings bold and battle grim brandished his ring sword hopeless of living hotly he smote her at the fiend woman's neck firmly it grappled broke through her bone joints the bill fully pierced her faint cursed body she fell to the ground then the hand sword was bloody the hero exulted the brand was brilliant brightly it glimmered just as from heaven gem-like shineth the torch of the firmament he glanced long the building and turned by the wall then he a lax vassal raging and wrathful raised his battle sword strong by the handle the edge was not useless to the hero in battle but he speedily wished to give grendel requital for the many assaults he had worked on the west danes not once but often when he slew in slumber the subjects of hrothgar swallowed down fifteen sleeping retainers of the folk of the danemen and fully as many carried away a horrible prey he gave him requital grim raging champion when he saw on his rest place weary of conflict grendel lying life joys bereaved as the battle at hair at erstwhile had scathed him his body far bounded a blow when he suffered death having seized him sword smiting heavy and he cut off his head then early this notice the clever carls who was comrades of hrothgar gazed on the sea deeps that the surging wave currents were mightily mingled the mere flood was gory of a good one the grey head together held converse the hoary of head that they hoped not to see again the appling ever that exulting in victory he'd return there to visit the distinguished folk ruler then many concluded the mere wolf had killed him the ninth hour came then from the ness edge departed the bold mooded shieldings the gold friend of heroes homeward betook him the stranger sat down then soul-sick sorrowful the sea-waves regarding they wished and yet weened not their well-loved friend lord to see any more the sword-blade began then the blood having touched it contracting and shrivelling with battle icicles twas a wonderful marvel that it melted entirely likest to ice when the father unbindeth the bond of the frost and unwindeth the wave bands he who wieldeth dominion of times and of tides a truth firm creator nor took he of jewels more in the dwelling lord of the wedders though they lay all around him than the head and the handle handsome with jewels 
the brand early melted burnt was the weapon so hot was the blood the strange spirit poisonous that in it did perish he early swam off then who had bided in combat the carnage of haters went up through the ocean the eddies were cleansed the spacious expanses when the spirit from far land his life put aside and this short-lived existence the seaman's defender came swimming to land then doughty of spirit rejoiced in his sea gift the bulky burden which he bore in his keeping the excellent vassals advanced then to meet him to god they were grateful were glad in their chieftain that to see him safe and sound was granted them from the high-minded hero then helmet and burney was speedily loosened the ocean was putrid the water neath welkin weltered with gore forth did they fare then their footsteps retracing merry and mirthful measured the earthway the highway familiar men very daring bare then the head from the sea cliff burdening each of the earl men excellent valiant four of them had to carry with labour the head of grendel to the high towering gold hall upstuck on the spear till fourteen most valiant and battle-brave geat men came there going straight to the palace the prince of the people measured the mead-ways their mood brave companion the atheling of earl-men entered the building deed a valiant man adorned with distinction doughty shield warrior to addressed king hrothgar then hung by the hair the head of grendel was borne to the building where beer thanes were drinking loth for earl-men and eke for the lady the warriors beheld then a wonderful sight End of section 8section nine of beowulf translated by john leslie hall this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twenty five beowulf brings his trophies hrothgar's gratitude beowulf spake offspring of edgtheo lo we blithely have brought thee bairn of half dana prince of the shieldings these presents from ocean which thine eye looketh on for an emblem of glory i came off alive from this narrowly scaping in war neath the water the work with great pains i performed and the fight had been finished quite nearly had god not defended me i failed in the battle aught to accomplish aided by hrunthing though that weapon was worthy but the wielder of earth folk gave me willingly to see on the wall a heavy old hand sword hanging in splendour he guided most often the lawn and the friendless that i swung as a weapon the wards of the house then i killed in the conflict when occasion was given me then the battle sword burned and the brand that was lifted as the blood current sprang hottest of war sweats seizing the hilt from my foes i off bore it i avenged as i ought to their acts of malignity the murder of dane men i then make thee this promise thou'lt be able in herod careless to slumber with thy throng of heroes and the thanes of thy people every and each of greater and lesser and thou needest not fear for them from the self-same direction as thou formerly fearedst o oh, folk lord of shieldings end day of four earlmen to this age hoary man then the grey-haired chieftain the gold-fashioned sword hilt old work of giants was thereupon given since the fall of the fiends it fell to the keeping of the wielder of danemen the wondersmith's labour and the bad-mooded being abandoned this world then opponent of god victim of murder and also his mother it went to the keeping of the best of the world kings where waters encircle who the scot divided in shielding dominion hrothgar discoursed the hilt he regarded the ancient heirloom where an old-time contention's beginning was graven the gurgling currents the floods slew thereafter the race of the giants they had proved themselves daring that people was lost to the lord everlasting through lash of the billows the father gave them final requital 
so in letters of rune on the clasp of the handle gleaming and golden twas graven exactly set forth and said whom that sword had been made for finest of irons who first it was wrought for wreathed at its handle and gleaming with serpents the wise one then said silent they all were son of old half dana he may say unrefuted who performs mid the folk men fairness and truth the hoary old ruler remembers the past that better by birth is this bairn of the nobles thy fame is extended through far away countries good friend beowulf o'er all of the races thou holdest all firmly hero-like strength with prudence of spirit i'll prove myself grateful as before we agreed on thou granted for long shalt become a great comfort to kinsmen and comrades a help unto heroes heremode became not such to the shieldings successors of edgewella he grew not to please them but grievous destruction and diresome death woes to dane men attracted he slew in anger his table companions trustworthy counsellors till he turned off lonely from world joys away wide famous ruler though high ruling heaven in hero strength raised him in might exalted him o'er men of all nations made him supreme yet a murderous spirit grew in his bosom he gave then no ring gems to the danes after custom endured he unjoyful standing the straits from strife that was raging long some folk sorrow learn then from this lay hold of virtue though laden with winters i have sung thee these measures tis a marvel to tell it how all ruling god from greatness of spirit giveth wisdom to children of men manor and earlship all things he ruleth he often permitted the mood thought of man of the illustrious lineage to lean to possessions allows him earthly delights at his manor a high burg of heroes to hold in his keeping maketh portions of earth folk hear him and a wide-reaching kingdom so that wisdom failing him he himself is unable to reckon its boundaries he liveth in luxury little debars him nor sickness nor age no treachery sorrow beclouded his spirit conflict nowhere no sword hate apparent but all of the world doth wend as he wisheth the worse he knoweth not till arrant arrogance inward pervading waxeth and springeth when the warder is sleeping the guard of the soul with sorrows encompassed too sound is his slumber the slayer is near him who with bow and arrow aimeth in malice chapter twenty six hrothgar moralizes rest after labour then bruised in his bosom he with bitter toothed missile is hurt neath his helmet from harmful pollution he is powerless to shield him by the wonderful mandates of the loath cursed spirit what too long he hath holden him seemeth too small savage he hoardeth nor boastfully giveth gold-plated rings the fate of the future flouts and forgetteth since god had erst given him greatness no little wielder of glory his end day and near it afterward happens that the bodily dwelling fleetingly fadeth falls into ruins another lays hold who doleth the ornaments the nobleman's jewels nothing lamenting heedeth no terror o oh, beowulf dear best of the heroes from bale strife defend thee and choose thee the better counsels eternal beware of arrogance world famous champion but a little while lasts thy life's vigour's fullness twill after hap early that illness or sword edge shall part thee from strength or the grasp of the fire or the wave of the current or the clutch of the edges or the flight of the war spear or age with its horrors or thine eyes bright flashing shall fade into darkness twill happen full early excellent hero that death shall subdue thee so the danes a half century i held under heaven helped them in struggles gainst many a race in middle earth's regions with ash wooden edges 
that enemies none on earth molested me lo offsetting change now came to my manner grief after joyance when grendel became my constant visitor inveterate hater i from that malice continually travailed with trouble no little thanks be to god that i gained in my lifetime to the lord everlasting to look on the gory head with mine eyes after long-lasting sorrow go to the bench now battle adorned joy in the feasting of jewels in common will meet with many when morning approacheth the gayet men was gladsome ganged he immediately to go to the bench as the clever one bade him then again as before were the famous for prowess hall inhabitors handsomely banqueted feasted anew the night veil fell then dark o'er the warriors the courtiers rose then the grey haired was anxious to go to his slumbers the hoary old shielding hankered the gay at man the champion doubtly greatly to rest him an earlman early outward did lead him fagged from his fairing from far country springing who for etiquette's sake all of a liegeman's needs regarded such as seamen at that time were bounden to feel the big-hearted rested the building up towered spacious and gilded the guest within slumbered till the sable-clad raven blithely foreboded the beacon of heaven then the bright shining sun o'er the bottoms came going the warriors hastened the heads of the peoples were ready to go again to their peoples the high-mooded pharaoh would far away thence would look for his vessel the valiant one bade then offspring of edgelaf off to bear hrunting to take his weapon his well-beloved iron he thanked him for the gift saying good he accounted the war friend and mighty nor child he with words then the blade of the brand twas a brave mooded hero when the warriors were ready arrayed in their trappings the atheling dear to the dane men advanced then on to the dais where the other was sitting grim mooded hero greeted king hrothgar chapter twenty seven sorrow at parting beowulf spake edged theo's offspring we men of the water wished to declare now fared from far lands were firmly determined to seek king hialak here we have fitly been welcomed and feasted as heart would desire it good was the greeting if greater affection i am any wise able ever on earth to gain at thy hands ruler of heroes then yet i have done i shall quickly be ready for combat and conflict o the course of the waters learn i that neighbours alarm thee with terror as haters did willem i hither will bring thee for help unto heroes henchmen by thousands i know as to hialak the lord of the gayet men though young in years he will permit me by words and by works ward of the people fully to furnish thee forces and bear thee my lance to relieve thee if liege men shall fail thee and help of my hand strength if hrethic be treating bairn of the king at the court of the gayet men he thereat may find him friends in abundance far away countries he were better to seek for who trusts in himself hrothgar discourse then making rejoinder these words thou hast uttered all-knowing god hath given thy spirit ne'er heard i an earlman thus early in life more clever in speaking thou art cautious of spirit mighty of muscle in mouth answers prudent i count on the hope that happen it ever that missile shall rob thee of hrethel's descendant edge horrid battle and illness or weapon deprive thee of prince of people's protector and life thou yet holdest the sea geats will never find a more fitting folk-lore to choose them gem ward of heroes than thou mightiest prove thee if the kingdom of kinsmen thou carest to govern thy mood spirit likes me the longer the better beowulf dear thou hast brought it to pass that to both these peoples peace shall be common to geat folk and dane men the strife be suspended the secret assailing thy suffered in your years and also that jewels be shared while i govern the wide-stretching kingdom 
and that many shall visit others o'er the ocean with excellent gift gems the ring adorned bark shall bring o'er the currents presents and love gifts this people i know toward foemen and friend firmly established after ancient etiquette everywise blameless then the warden of earlmen gave him still farther kinsman of half dana a dozen of jewels bade him safely seek with the presence his well-beloved people early returning then the noble-born king kissed the distinguished dear lovered liegeman the dane prince saluted him and clasped his neck tears from him fell from the grey-headed man he two things expected aged and reverend but rather the second that bold in council they'd meet thereafter the man was so dear that he failed to suppress the emotions that moved him but in mood fetters fastened the long famous hero longeth in secret deep in his spirit for the dear beloved man though not a blood kinsman beowulf thenceward gold splendid warrior walked o'er the meadows exulting in treasure the sea-going vessel riding at anchor awaited its owner as they passed on their way then the present of hrothgar was frequently referred to a folk king indeed that every way blameless till age did debar him the joys of his might which hath many oft injured end of section nine section ten of beowulf translated by john leslie hall this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twenty eight the homeward journey the two queens then the band of very valiant retainers came to the current they were clad all in armour in link woven burnies the land warder noticed the return of the earlmen as he erstwhile had seen them no wise with insult he greeted the strangers from the naze of the cliff but rode on to meet them said the bright armoured visitors vessel would travelled welcome to wedders the wide-bosomed craft then lay on the sand laden with armour with horses and jewels the ring-stemmed sailor the mast uptowered o'er the treasure of hrothgar to the boat ward a gold-bound brand he presented that he was afterwise honoured on the ale-bench more highly as the heirloom's owner set he out on his vessel to drive on the deep dane country left he along by the mast then a sea garment fluttered a rope fastened sail the sea boat resounded the wind o'er the waters the wave floater nowise kept from its journey the sea goer travelled the foamy neck floated forth o'er the currents the well-fashioned vessel o'er the waves of the ocean till they came within sight of the cliffs of the gayot men the well-known headlands the wave-goer hastened driven by breezes stood on the shore prompt at the ocean the port ward was ready who long in the past out looked in the distance at water's edge waiting well-livered heroes he bound to the bank then the broad-bosomed vessel fast in its fetters lest the force of the water should be able to injure the ocean wood winsome bade he up then take the treasure of princes plate gold and fretwork not far was it thence to go off in search of the giver of jewels hraethel's son hialak at home there remaineth himself with his comrades close to the sea-coast the building was splendid the king heroic great in his hall hidge very young was fine-mooded clever though few were the winters that the daughter of hareth had dwelt in the borough but she nowise was cringing nor niggard of presents of ornaments rare to the race of the gayet men thraetho nursed anger excellent folk queen hot burning hatred no hero whatever among household companions her husband excepted dared to adventure to look at the woman with eyes in the daytime but he knew that death chains hand wreathed were wrought him early thereafter when the hand strife was over edges were ready that fierce raging sword point had to force a decision murder bell show such no womanly custom for a lady to practise though lovely her person that a weaver of peace 
on pretence of anger a beloved liegeman of life should deprive soothly this hindered hemming's kinsman other ale-drinking earlmen asserted that fearful folk sorrows fewer she wrought them treacherous doings since first she was given adorned with gold to the war-hero youthful for her origin honoured when offers great palace o'er the fallow flood by her father's instructions she sought on her journey where she afterwards fully famed for her virtue her fate on the king's seat enjoyed in her lifetime love did she hold with the ruler of heroes the best it is told me of all the earthmen that oceans encompass of earl kindreds endless hence offer was famous far and widely by gifts and by battles spear valiant hero the home of his fathers he governed with wisdom whence ere did issue for help unto heroes hemming's kinsman grandson of garmund great in encounters chapter twenty nine beowulf and Heelac. when the brave one departed his band along with him seeking the seashore the sea marches treading the wide stretching shores the world candle glimmered the sun from the southward they proceeded then onward early arriving where they heard that the troop lord on genthea's slayer excellent youthful folk prince and warrior was distributing jewels close in his castle the coming of beowulf was announced in a message quickly to heelac that the folk troops defender forth to the palace the linden companion alive was advancing secure from the combat court would a going the building was early inward made ready for the foot-going guests as the good one had ordered he sat by the man then who had lived through the struggle kinsman by kinsman when the king of the people had in lordly language saluted the dear one in words that were formal the daughter of harreth coursed through the building carrying mead cups she loved the retainers tendered the beakers to the high-minded gayet men he alack gan then pleasantly plying his companion with questions in the high towering palace a curious interest tormented his spirit what meaning to see in the sea gate's adventures beowulf worthy how throve your journeying when thou thoughtest suddenly far o'er the salt streams to seek and encounter a battle at herut hast bettered for hrothgar the famous folk leader his far published sorrows any at all in agony billows i mused upon torture distrusted the journey of the beloved liegeman i long time did pray thee by no means to seek out the murderous spirit to suffer the south danes themselves to decide on grappling with grendel to god i am thankful to be suffered to see thee safe from thy journey Beowulf answered, bairn of old Edgetheo, his hidden from no means he lack chieftain, from many of men, the meeting so famous, what mournful moments of me and of Grendel were passed in the place where he pressing affliction on the victory shieldings scathefully brought, anguish for ever, that all I avenged, so that any under heaven of the kinsmen of grendel needeth not boast of that cry in the morning who longest liveth of the loth-going kindred encompassed by moorland i came in my journey to the royal ring hall hrothgar to greet there soon did the famous scion of half dana when he understood fully the spirit that led me assign me a seat with a son of his bosom the troop was in joyance meadly greater neath arch of the ether not ever beheld i mid hall building holders the highly famed queen peace tire peoples oft passed through the building cheered the young troopers she oft tendered a hero a beautiful ring band ere she went to her sitting of the daughter of hrothgar in view of the courtiers to the earl at the end the ale vessel carried whom free aware i heard then hall sitter's title when nail adorned jewels she gave to the heroes gold bedecked youthful to the glad son of froda her faith has been plighted the friend of the shieldings the guard of the kingdom hath given his sanction and counts sit a vantage for a part of the quarrels a portion of hatred to pay with the woman somewhere not rarely when the ruler has fallen 
the life-taking lance relaxeth its fury for a brief breathing spell though the bride be charming chapter thirty beowulf narrates his adventures to Heolac. it may well discomfort the prince of the heathobards and each of the vain men of earls that attend him when he goes to the building escorting the woman that a noble-born daneman the knight should be feasting there gleam on his person the leavings of elders hard and ring bright heathobards treasure while they wielded their arms till they misled to the battle their own dear lives and beloved companions he saith at the banquet who the collar beholdeth an ancient ash warrior who earlman's destruction clearly recalleth cruel to his spirit sadly beginneth sounding the youthful thane champion spirit through the thoughts of his bosom war grief to waken and this world answer speaketh art thou able my friend to know when thou seest it the brand which thy father bare to the conflict in his latest adventure neath visor of helmet the dearly loved iron where dane men did slay him and brave mooded shieldings on the fall of the heroes when vengeance was sleeping the slaughter place wielded e'en now some man of the murderer's progeny exulting in ornaments enters the building boasts of his blood shedding off beareth the jewel which thou shouldst wholly hold in possession so he urgeth and mindeth on every occasion with woe-bringing words till waxeth the season when the woman's fame for the works of his father the bill having bitten blood glory seepeth fated to perish the other one thenceward scapeth alive the land knoweth thoroughly then the oaths of the earlmen on each side are broken when rancors unresting are raging in ingeld and his wife love waxeth less warm after sorrow so the heathabards favour not faithful i reckon their part in the treaty not true to the danemen their friendship not fast i further shall tell thee more about grendel that thou fully mayst hear ornament giver what afterward came from the hand rush of heroes when heaven's bright jewel o'er earth fields had gilded the stranger came raging the horrible night fiend us for to visit where wholly unharmed the hall we were guarding to hon shio happened a hopeless contention death to the doomed one dead he fell foremost girded war champion to him grendel became then to the vassal distinguished a tooth-weaponed murderer the well-beloved henchman's body all swallowed not the earlier off empty of hand did the bloody tooth murderer mindful of evils wish to escape from the gold-giver's palace but sturdy of strength he strove to outdo me hand ready grappled a glove was suspended spacious and wondrous in art fetters fashioned which was fashioned entirely by touch of the craftsman from the dragon's skin by the devil's devices he down in its depths would do me and sadly one among many deed do raging though sinless he saw me not so could it happen when i in my anger upright did stand tis too long to recount how requital i furnished for every evil to the earlman's destroyer twas there my prince that i proudly distinguished thy land with my labours he left and retreated he lived his life a little while longer yet his right hand guarded his footstep in herod and sad mooded thence to the sea-bottom fell he mournful in mind for the might rush of battle the friend of the shieldings with gold that was plated with ornaments many much requited me when daylight had dawned and down to the banquet we had sat us together there was chanting and joyance the age-stricken shielding asked many questions and of old times related oft light rigging harp-strings joy-telling wood were touched by the brave one now he uttered measures mourning and truthful then the large-hearted land king a legend of wonder truthfully told us now troubled with years the age hoary warrior afterward began to mourn for the might that marked him in youth days his breast within boiled when burdened with winters much he remembered 
from morning till night then we joyed us therein as etiquette suffered till the second night season came unto earth folk then early thereafter the mother of grendel was ready for vengeance wretched she journeyed her son had death ravished the wrath of the gayet men the horrible woman avenged her offspring and with mighty main strength murdered a hero there the spirit of ash hera aged adviser was ready to vanish nor when morn had lightened were they anywise suffered to consume him with fire folk of the danemen the death-weakened hero nor the beloved liegeman to lay on the pyre she the corpse had oft carried in the clutch of the foemen neath mountain brooks flood to hrothgar twas saddest of pains that ever had preyed on the chieftain by the life of thee the land prince then me besought very sadly in sea currents eddies to display my prowess to reveal my safety might deeds accomplish much did he promise i found then the famous flood currents cruel horrible depth warder and while unto us two hand was in common the currents were seething with gore that was clotted and grendel's fierce mother's head i oft carried in the hall at the bottom with huge reaching sword edge hardly i wrested my life from her clutches not doomed was i then but the warden of earlmen afterward gave me jewels in quantity kinsman of half dana end of section ten Section eleven of Beowulf, translated by John Leslie Hall. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter thirty one. Gift giving is mutual. So the beloved land prince lived in decorum. I had missed no rewards, no meeds of my prowess, but he gave me jewels regarding my wishes. Half day near his bairn i'll bring them to thee then atheling of earlmen offer them gladly and still unto thee is all my affection but few of my folk kin find i surviving but thee dear helak bade he in then to carry the boar image banner battle high helmet iron grey armour the excellent weapon in song measures said this suit for the battle hrothgar presented me bade me expressly wise mooded atheling therefore to tell thee the whole of its history said king hergar owned it dane prince for long yet he wished not to give then the mail to his son though dearly he loved him here would the hardy hold all in joyance I heard that there followed hard on the jewels two braces of stallions of striking resemblance, dappled in yellow. He granted him usance of horses and treasures. So a kinsman should bear him, no web of treachery weave for another, nor by cunning craftiness cause the destruction of trusty companion. Most precious to Helak, the bold one in battle, was the bairn of his sister, and each unto other mindful of favours i am told that to hidge he proffered the necklace wonder gem rare that welch theo gave him the troop leader's daughter a trio of horses slender and saddle bright soon did the jewel embellish her bosom when the beer feast was over so edge theo's bairn brave did prove him war famous man by deeds that were valiant he lived in honour beloved companions slew not carousing his mood was not cruel but by hand strength hugest of heroes then living the brave one retained the bountiful gift that the lord had allowed him long was he wretched so that sons of the gate men accounted him worthless and the lord of the liegemen loth was to do him mickle of honour when mead cups were passing they fully believed him idle and sluggish an indolent atheling to the honour-blessed man there came requital for the cuts he had suffered the folk troops defender bade fetch to the building the heirloom of hrethel embellished with gold so the brave one enjoined it there was jewel no richer in the form of a weapon mung geats of that era in beowulf's keeping he placed it and gave him seven of thousands manor and lordship 
Common to both was land among the people, estate and inherited rights and possessions. To the second one specially spacious dominions, to the one who was better. It afterward happened, in days that followed, befell the battle thanes, after Helac's death, and when Hardred was murdered, with weapons of warfare neath well-covered targets, when valiant battle-men in victor band sought him, war-shifling heroes harassed the nephew of Herrick in battle. To Beowulf's keeping turned there in time extensive dominions. He fittingly ruled them a fifty of winters, he a man-ruler wise was, man-award old, till a certain one gan, on gloom-darkening nights, a dragon to govern, who guarded a treasure, a high-rising stone cliff on heath that was greyish, a path neath it lay, unknown unto mortals. Some one of earth-men entered the mountain, the heathenish horde laid hold of with ardour. Chapter 32 The Horde and the Dragon He sought of himself who sorely did harm him, but for need very pressing the servant of one of the sons of the heroes hate blows evaded, seeking for shelter and the sin-driven warrior took refuge within there. He early looked in it, when the onset surprised him. He a gem-vessel saw there, many of such like ancient ornaments in the earth-cave were lying, as in days of yore some one of men of illustrious lineage, as a legacy monstrous, there had secreted them, careful and thoughtful, dear-valued jewels. Death had oft snatched them, in the days of the past, and the one man moreover of the flower of the folk who fared there the longest was fain to defer it friend morning warder a little longer to be left in enjoyment of long-lasting treasure a barrow already stood on the plain the steam currents nigh to new by the ness edge beneath of approaching the keeper of rings carried within a ponderous deal of the treasure of nobles of gold that was beaten, briefly he spake then. Hold thou, O earth, now heroes no more may, the earnings of earlmen. Lo, erst in thy bosom worthy men won them. War death hath ravished. Perilous life, Baal, all my warriors, liege men beloved, who this life have forsaken, who haul pleasures saw. No sword-bearer have I, and no one to burnish the gold-plated vessel, the high-valued beaker. My heroes are vanished. The hardy helmet behung with gilding shall be reaved of its riches. The ring-cleansers slumber who were charged to have ready visors for battle. And the burnie that bided in battle encounter o'er breaking of war-shields the bite of the edges moulds with the hero. The ring-twisted armour, its lord being lifeless, no longer may journey hanging by heroes. Harp joy is vanished, the rapture of gleewood, no excellent falcon swoops through the building, no swift-footed charger grindeth the gravel. A grievous destruction no few of the world folk widely hath scattered. So woeful of spirit, one after all, lamented mournfully, moaning in sadness by day and by night, till death with its billows dashed on his spirit. Then the ancient dusk's gather found the great treasure standing all open. He who flaming and fiery flies to the barrows, naked war-dragon, nightly escapeth encompassed with fire. Men under heaven widely beheld him. Tis said that he looks for the hoard in the earth, where old he is guarding the heathenish treasure, he'll be no wise the better. So three hundred winters the waster of peoples held upon earth that excellent hoard hall, till the forementioned earl man angered him bitterly, 
the beet-plated beaker he bare to his chieftain and fullest remission for all his remissness begged of his liege lord then the hoard was discovered the treasure was taken his petition was granted the lawn mooded liege man his lord regarded the old work of earth folk twas the earliest occasion when the dragon awoke the strife was renewed there he snuffed long the stone then stout-hearted found he the footprint of foeman too far had he gone with cunning craftiness close to the head of the fire-spewing dragon so undoomed he may escape from anguish and exile with ease who possesseth the favour of heaven the hoard warden eagerly searched o'er the ground then would meet with the person that caused him sorrow while in slumber reclining gleaming and wild he oft went round the cavern all of it outward not any of earth men was seen in that desert yet he joyed in the battle rejoiced in the conflict oft he turned to the barrow sought for the gem cup this he soon perceived then that some man or other had discovered the gold the famous folk treasure not vain did the hoard ward wait until evening then the ward of the barrow was angry in spirit the loathed one wished to pay for the dear valued drink cup with a fire then the day was done as the dragon would have it he no longer would wait on the wall but departed fire impelled flaming fearful the start was to earls in the land as it early thereafter to their giver of gold was grievously ended chapter thirty three brave though aged reminiscences the stranger began then to vomit forth fire to burn the great manor the blaze then glimmered for anguish to earlmen not anything living was the hateful ergo willing to leave there the war of the worm widely was noticed the feud of the foemen afar and near how the enemy injured the earls of the gate men harried with hatred back he hied to the treasure to the well-hidden cavern ere the coming of daylight he had circled with fire the folk of those regions with brand and burning in the barrow he trusted in the wall and his war might the weaning deceived him then straight was the horror to beowulf published early forsooth at his own native homestead the best of buildings was burning and melting gift seat of gate men twas grief to the spirit of the good mooded hero the greatest of sorrows the wise one weened then that wielding his kingdom against the ancient commandments he had bitterly angered the lord everlasting with law and meditations his bosom welled inward as was nowise his custom the fire-spewing dragon fully had wasted the fastness of warriors the water land outward the manor with fire the folk ruling hero prince of the wedders was planning to wreak him the war men's defender bade them to make him earl men's atheling an excellent war shield holy of iron fully he knew then that wood from the forest was helpless to aid him shield against fire the long worthy ruler must live the last of his limited earth days of life in the world and the worm along with him though he long had been holding hoard wealth and plenty then the ring prince disdained to seek with a war band with army extensive the air-going ranger he felt no fear of the foeman's assaults and he counted for little the might of the dragon his power and prowess for previously dared he a heap of hostility hazarded dangers war thane when hrothgar's palace he cleansed conquering combatant clutched in the battle the kinsmen of grendel of kindred detested twas of hand fights not least where he alack was slaughtered when the king of the gate men with clashings of battle friend lord of folks in frisian dominions offspring of Hrethel, perished through sword drink with battle swords beaten thence beowulf came then on self-help relying swam through the waters he bare on his arm lone going thirty outfits of armour when the ocean he mounted the hetwars by no means had need to be boastful of their fighting afoot who forward to meet him carried their war shields not many returned from the brave mooded battle knight back to their homesteads 
Edgethea's bairn o'er the bite courses swam then, lone go alone to his land folk returning, where hidge to him tender treasure and kingdom, rings and dominion. Her son she not trusted, to be able to keep the kingdom devised him gainst alien races, on the death of King Heolac. Yet the sad one succeeded not in persuading the Atheling in any way ever to act as a suzerain to Hardred, or promise to govern the kingdom. Yet with friendly counsel in the folk he sustained him, gracious with honour, till he grew to be older, wielded the wedders. Wide fleeting outlaws, Ochtherus' sons, sought him o'er the waters. They had stirred a revolt against the helm of the sheaflings, the best of the sea kings, who in Swedish dominions distributed treasure, distinguished folk leader. Twas the end of his earth days, injury fatal by swing of the sword he received as a greeting, offspring of Heolac, on Gentheus' bairn, later departed to visit his homestead. When Hardred was dead, let Beowulf rule them, govern the Geat men, good was that folk king. End of section 11section 12 of beowulf translated by john leslie hall this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter 34 beowulf seeks the dragon beowulf's reminiscences he planned requital for the folk leader's ruin in days thereafter to eadgils the wretched becoming an enemy Ochthera's son then went with a war troop o'er the wide stretching currents with warriors and weapons. With woe journeys cold he after avenged him, the king's life he took. So he came off uninjured from all of his battles, perilous fights, offspring of Edgethea, from his deeds of daring, till that day most momentous when he fate driven fair to fight with the dragon. With eleven companions, the prince of the Geat men went lowering with fury to look at the fire drake. Inquiring, he'd found how the feud had arisen, hate to his heroes. The highly famed gem vessel was brought to his keeping through the hand of the informer. That in the throng was thirteenth of heroes, that caused the beginning of conflict so bitter, captive and wretched must sad-mooded thenceward point out the place he passed then unwillingly to the spot where he knew of the notable cavern the cave under earth not far from the ocean the anger of eddies which inward was full of jewels and wires a warder uncanny warrior weaponed warded the treasure old under earth no easy possession for any of earth folk access to get to. Then the battle brave Atheling sat on the nays edge, while the gold friend of Geatmen gracious saluted his fireside companions. Woe was his spirit, death boding, wavering, weird very near him, who must seize the old hero, his sole treasure look for, dragging aloof his life from his body not flesh hidden long was the folk leader's spirit beowulf spake edgethea's son i survived in my youth days many a conflict hours of onset that all i remember i was seven winters old when the jewel prince took me high lord of heroes at the hands of my father Hraethel, the hero king had me in keeping gave me treasure and feasting our kinship remembered not ever was I any less dear to him night in the boroughs than the bairns of his household, here balls and hathkin, and he lack mine. To the eldest unjustly by acts of a kinsman was murder bed strewn, since him hathkin from horn bow his sheltering chieftain shot with an arrow, erred in his aim and injured his kinsman, one brother the other, with blood sprinkled spear. "'Twas a feeless fight, finished in malice, sad to his spirit. "'The folk prince, however, had to part from existence with vengeance untaken. "'So to hoar-headed hero tis heavily crushing, 
to live to see his son as he rideth young on the gallows then measures he chanteth a song of sorrow when his son is hanging for the raven's delight and aged and hoary he is unable to offer any assistance every morning his offspring's departure is constant recalled he cares not to wait for the birth of an heir in his borough enclosures since that one through death pain the deeds hath experienced he heart grieved beholds in the house of his son the wine building wasted the wind lodging places reaved of their roaring the riders are sleeping the night's in the grave there's no sound of the harp wood joy in the yards as of yore were familiar chapter thirty five reminiscences continued Beowulf's last battle he seeks then his chamber singeth the woe song one for the other all too extensive seemed homesteads and plains so the helm of the wedders mindful of herebold heart sorrow carried stirred with emotion no wise was able to wreak his ruin on the ruthless destroyer he was unable to follow the warrior with hatred with deeds that were direful though dear he not held him then pressed by the pang this pain occasioned him he gave up glee god light elected he left to his sons as the man that is rich does his land and fortress when from life he departed then was crime and hostility twixt swedes and gayet men o'er oh, the wide stretching water warring was mutual burdensome hatred when hraethel had perished and on gentheo's offspring were active and valiant wish not to hold to peace over sea but round hraosna berch often accomplished cruelest massacre this my kinsman avenged the feud and fury as tis found on inquiry though one of them paid it with forfeit of life joys with price that was hard the struggle became then fatal to hathkin lord of the gayet men then i heard that at morning one brother the other with edges of irons egged on to murder where on gentheo maketh onset of eover the helmet crashed the hoary head shifling sword smitten fell his hand then remembered feud hate sufficient refused not the death blow the gems that he gave me with jewel bright sword i quitted in contest as occasion was offered land he allowed me life joy at homestead manner to live on little he needed from gepids or danes or in sweden to look for trooper less true with treasure to buy him Mung foot soldiers ever in front i would hie me alone in the vanguard and ever more gladly warfare shall wage while this weapon endureth that late and early often did serve me when i proved before heroes the slayer of day hreven knight of hugmen he by no means was suffered to the king of the frisians to carry the jewels the breast decoration but the banner possessor bowed in the battle brave mooded atheling no weapon was slayer but war grapple broke then the surge of his spirit his body destroying now shall weapon's edge make war for the treasure and hand and firm sword Beowulf spake then boast words uttered the latest occasion i braved in my youth days battles unnumbered still i am willing to struggle to look for fame deeds perform folk ward and prudent if the hateful despoiler forth from his cavern seeketh me out each of the heroes helm bearers sturdy he thereupon greeted beloved co-liegemen his last salutation no brand would i bear no blade for the dragon wist i away my word boast to accomplish else with a monster as with grendel i did it but fire in the battle hot i expect there furious flame burning so i fixed on my body target and war mail the ward of the barrow i'll not flee from a foot length the foeman and canny at the wall twill befall us as fate decreeth each one's creator 
I am eager in spirit with the winged war hero to away with all boasting. Bide on the barrow with burnies protected, earls in armour, which of us two may better bear his disaster when the battle is over. Tis no matter of yours, and man cannot do it, but me and me only, to measure his strength with the monster of malice, might deeds to accomplish. I wish with prowess shall gain the gold or the battle, direful death way will drag off your ruler. The mighty champion rose by his shield then, brave under helmet, in battle mail went he, neath steep rising stone cliffs, the strength he relied on of one man alone. No work for a coward. Then he saw by the wall who a great many battles had lived through, most worthy, when foot troops collided, stone arches standing, stout hearted champion, saw a brook from the barrow bubbling out thencewood. The flood of the fountain was fuming with war flame, not nigh to the horde, for season the briefest could he brave, without burning, the abyss that was yawning, the drake was so fiery. The prince of the wedders caused then that words came from his bosom, so fierce was his fury. The firm-hearted shouted, his battle-clear voice came in resounding, neath the grey-coloured stone. Stirred was his hatred, the horde war distinguished the speech of a man, Time was no longer to look out for friendship. The breath of the monster issued forth first, vapoury war sweat out of the stone cave. The earth re-echoed. The earl neath the barrow lifted his shield, lord of the gate-men, toward the terrible stranger. The ring-twisted creature's heart was then ready to seek for a struggle. The excellent battle-king first brandished his weapon, the ancient heirloom of edges unblunted to the death planners twain was terror from other the lord of the troopers intrepidly stood then against his high striding shield when the dragon coiled him quickly together in corslet he bided he went then in blazes bending and striding hasting him forward his life and body the targ well protected for time period shorter than wish demanded for the well-renowned leader, where he then for the first day was forced to be victor, famous in battle, as fate had not willed it. The lord of the gate men uplifted his hand then, smiting the fire-drake with sword that was precious. That bright on the bone the blade edge did weaken, bit more feebly than his folk leader needed, burdened with bale grease. Then the barrow protector, when the sword-blow had fallen, was fierce in his spirit, flinging his fires, flamings of battle, gleamed then afar. The gold friend of Wedders boasted no conquests, his battle-sword failed him naked in conflict, as by no means it ought to, long trusty weapon. T'was no slight undertaking that Edgethayer's famous offspring would leave the drake cavern's bottom, he must live in some region other than this, by the will of the dragon, as each one of earthmen existence must forfeit. T'was early thereafter the excellent warriors met with each other, and you and afresh the horde ward took heart, gasps heaved then his bosom. Sorrow he suffered, encircled with fire, who the people erst governed. His companions by no means were banded about him, bairns of the princes, with valorous spirit, but they sped to the forest, seeking for safety. The soul deeps of one were ruffled with care, kin love can never aught in him waver who well doth consider. Chapter thirty six We laugh the trusty. Beowulf is deserted by friends and by sword. The son of Wexstan was We laugh entitled shield warrior precious prince of the sheaflings alf hera's kinsman he saw his dear liege lord enduring the heat neath helmet and visor then he minded the holding that erst he had given him the wag munding warriors wealth blessed homestead each of the folk rights his father had wielded he was hot for the battle his hand seized the target the yellow bark shield 
he unsheathed his old weapon, which was known among earthmen as the relic of Aenmund, Ochera's offspring, whom exiled and friendless, Wechstan did slay with sword edge in battle, and carried his kinsman the clear shining helmet, the ring made birdie, the old giant weapon that Onella gave him, his boon friend's armour, ready war trappings. He the feud did not mention, though he'd fatally smitten the son of his brother. Many a half year held he the treasures, the bill and the burnie, till his bairn became able, like his father before him, fame deeds to accomplish. Then he gave him among Geert men a goodly array of weeds for his warfare. He went from life then old on his journey. Twas the earliest time then that the youthful champion might charge in the battle, aiding his liege lord. His spirit was dauntless. Nor did kinsman's bequest quail at the battle. This the dragon discovered on their coming together. We laugh uttered many a right saying, said to his fellows, sad was his spirit. I remember the time when, tasting the mead cup, we promised in the hall the lord of us all who gave us these ring treasures, that this battle equipment, swords and helmets, would certainly quite him, should need of such aid ever befall him, in the war band he chose us for this journey spontaneously, stirred us to glory and gave me these jewels, since he held and esteemed us trustworthy spearmen, hardy helm-bearers, though his hero achievement our lord intended alone to accomplish, ward of his people, for most of achievements, doings audacious, he did among earth-folk. The day is now come when the ruler of earth-men needeth the vigour of valiant heroes. Let us wend us towards him, the war-prince to succour, while the heat yet rageth, horrible fire-fight. God wot in me, tis mickle the leafer, the blaze should embrace my body and eat it with my treasure bestower. Messemeth not proper to bear our battle-shields back to our country, lest first we are able to fell and destroy the long-hating foeman, to defend the life of the prince of the wedders. Well do I know, tisn't earned by his exploits, he only of gait men sorrow should suffer, sink in the battle. Brand and helmet to us both shall be common, shield cover burny. Through the bale smoke he stalked then, went under helmet to the help of his chieftain, briefly discoursing, Beowulf dear, perform thou all fully, as thou formerly saidest, in thy youthful years, that while yet thou livest, thou wouldst let thine honour not ever be lessened, thy life thou shalt save, mighty in actions, athling undaunted, with all of thy vigour, I'll give thee assistance. The dragon came raging, wild-mooded stranger, when these words had been uttered, t'was the second occasion, seeking his enemies, men that were hated, with hot gleaming fire-waves, with blaze billows burned the board to its edges. The fight armour failed then to furnish assistance to the youthful spear hero, but the young aged stripling quickly advanced neath his kinsman's war target, since his own had been ground in the grip of the fire. Then the warrior king was careful of glory, he soundly smote with sword for the battle, that it stood in the head by hatred driven. Nailing was shivered, the old and iron maid brand of Beowulf in battle deceived him. Twas denied him that edges of irons were able to help in the battle. The hand was too mighty, which every weapon, as I heard on inquiry, outstruck in its stroke, and to struggle he carried the wonderful war-sword. It waxed him no better. Then the people the spoiler, third of his onsets, fierce raging fire-drake, a feud hate was mindful, charged on the strong one, when chance was afforded, heated with war-grim, seized on his neck with teeth that were bitter, he bloody did wax with soul gore seething, sword blood in waves boiled. End of section twelve. Section thirteen of Beowulf, translated by John Leslie Hall. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain.
Chapter thirty seven The Fatal Struggle Beowulf's Last Moments Then I heard that at need of the king of the people the upstanding earlmen exhibited prowess, vigour and courage, as suited his nature. He his head did not guard, but the high minded liegeman's hand was consumed when he succoured his kinsman. So he struck the strife bringing strange comer lower earl thane in armour that in went the weapon gleaming and plated that gan there the fire later to lessen the liege lord himself then retained his consciousness brandished his war knife battle sharp bitter that he bare on his armour the wedder lord cut the worm in the middle they had felled the enemy life drove out then puissant prowess the pair had destroyed him land chiefs related so a liege man should prove him a thane man when needed to the prince twas the last of his era of conquest by his own great achievements the latest of world deeds the wound then began which the earth-dwelling dragon erstwhile had wrought him to burn and to swell he soon then discovered that bitterest bale woe in his bosom was raging poison within the atheling advanced then that along by the wall he prudent of spirit might sit on the settle he saw the giant work how arches of stone strengthened with pillars the earth hall eternal inward supported then the long worthy liegeman laid with his hand the far famous chieftain gory from sword edge refreshing the face of his friend lord and ruler sated with battle unbinding his helmet beowulf answered of his injury spake he his wound that was fatal he was fully aware he had lived his allotted life days enjoying the pleasures of earth then past was entirely his measure of days death very near my son i would give now my battle equipments had any of heirs been after me granted along of my body this people i governed fifty of winters no king among my neighbours dared to encounter me with comrades in battle, try me with terror. The time to me ordered I bided at home, mine own kept fitly, sought me no snares, swore me not many oaths in injustice. Joy over all this I am able to have, though ill with my death wounds. Hence the ruler of earthmen need not charge me with the killing of kinsmen, when cometh my life out forth from my body. Fare thou with haste now to behold the hoard neath the hoard greyish stone, well loved we laugh, now the worm is a lying, sore wounded sleepeth, deceives of his treasure. Go thou in haste that treasures of old eye, gold wealth may gaze on, together see lying the ether bright jewels, be easier able having the heap of hoard gems to yield my life and the land folk whom long i have governed chapter thirty eight we laugh plunders the dragon's den beowulf's death then heard i that winstan's son very quickly these words being uttered heeded his liege lord wounded and war sick went in his armour his well-woven ring mail neath the roof of the barrow then the trusty retainer treasure gems many victorious saw when the seat he came near to gold treasure sparkling spread on the bottom wonder on the wall and the worm creature's cavern the ancient dawn flyers vessels extending cups of the ancients of cleansers bereaved robbed of their ornaments there were helmets in numbers old and rust-eaten arm bracelets many artfully woven wealth can easily gold on the sea bottom turn into vanity each one of earth men arm him who pleaseth and he saw there lying an all golden banner high o'er the hoard of hand wonders greatest linked with lassets a light from it sparkles that the floor of the cavern he was able to look on to examine the jewels sight of the dragon not any was offered but edge off carried him then i heard that the hero the hoard treasure plundered 
the giant work ancient wreathed in the cavern bear on his bosom the beakers and platters as himself would fain have it and took off the standard the brightest of beacons the bill had erst injured its edge was of iron the old ruler's weapon him who long had watched as ward of the jewels who fire terror carried hot for the treasure rolling in battle in middlemost darkness till murdered he perished the messenger hastened not loth to return hurried by jewels curiosity urged him if excellent mooded alive he should find the lord of the wedders mortally wounded at the place where he left him mid the jewels he found then the famous old chieftain his liege lord beloved at his life's end gory he thereupon gan to lave him with water till the point of his word pierced his breast hoard beowulf spake the gold gems he noticed the old one in sorrow for the jewels i look on thanks do i utter for all to the ruler wielder of worship with words of devotion the lord everlasting that he let me such treasures gain for my people ere death overtook me since i've bartered the aged life to me granted for treasure of jewels attend ye henceforward the wants of the war thanes i can wait here no longer the battle famed bid ye to build them a great hill bright when i'm burned at the brim current's limit as a memory mark to the men i have governed aloft it shall tower on wales nests uprising that thanes of the ocean hereafter may call it beowulf sparrow those who barks ever dashing from a distance shall drive o'er the darkness of waters the bold mooded troop lord took from his neck then the ring that was golden gave to his liegeman the youthful war hero his gold flashing helmet his collar and war mail bade him well to enjoy them thou art latest left of the line of our kindred of wagmunding people weird hath oft carried all of my kinsmen to the creator's glory earls in their vigour i shall after them fare twas the aged liege lord's last spoken word in his musings of spirit ere he mounted the fire the battle waves burning from his bosom departed his soul to seek the sainted one's glory chapter thirty nine the dead foes we last bitter taunts it had woefully chanced then the youthful retainer to behold on earth the most ardent beloved at his life day's limit lying there helpless the slayer too lay there of life all bereaved horrible earth drake harassed with sorrow the round twisted monster was permitted no longer to govern the ring hordes but edges of war swords mightily seized him battle sharp sturdy leavings of hammers that still from his wounds the flyer from far land fell to the earth hard by his hoard house hoped he at midnight not air through the air nor exulting in jewels suffered them to see him but he sank then to earthward through the hero chief's handwork i heard sure it throve then but few in the land of liege men of valour though of every achievement bold he had proved him to run gainst the breath of the venomous scather or in the hall of the treasure to trouble with hand blows if he watching had found the ward of the hoard hall on the barrow abiding Beowulf's part of the treasure of jewels was paid for with death. Each of the twain had attained to the end of life so unlasting. Not long was the time till the tardy at battle returned from the thicket, the timid truce breakers ten altogether, who durst not before play with the lances in the prince of the people's pressing emergency, but blushing with shame, with shields they betook them, with arms and armour where the old one was lying they gazed upon Wielath. he was sitting exhausted foot-going fighter not far from the shoulders of the lord of the people would rouse him with water no whit did it help him though he hoped for it keenly he was able on earth not at all in the leader life to retain and no wise to alter the will of the wielder the world ruler's power would govern the actions of each one of heroes as yet he is doing from the young one forthwith 
then could grim-worded greeting be got for him quickly whose courage had failed him we laughed discourse then wetch stan his son sad-mooded hero looked on the hated he whose soothness will utter can say that the liege lord who gave you the jewels the ornament armour wherein ye are standing when on ale bench often he offered to hall men helmet and burney the prince to his liegemen as best upon earth he was able to find him that he wildly wasted his war gear undoubtedly when battle o'ertook him the troop king no need had to glory in comrades yet god permitted him victory wielder with weapon unaided himself to avenge when vigour was needed i lied protection but little was able to give him in battle and i gan notwithstanding helping my kinsman my strength overtaxing he waxed the weaker when with wetter my smote on my mortal opponent the fire less strongly flamed from his bosom too few of protectors came round the king at the critical moment now must ornament taking and weapon bestowing home joyance all cease for your kindred food for the people each of your warriors must needs be bereaved of rights that he holdeth in landed possessions when far away nobles shall learn of your leaving your lord so basely the dastardly deed death is more pleasant to every earl man than infamous life is end of section thirteen section fourteen of beowulf translated by john leslie hall this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter forty the messenger of death then he charged that the battle be announced at the hedge up o'er the cliff edge where the earl troopers bided the whole of the morning mood wretched sat them bearers of battle shields both things expecting the end of his lifetime and the coming again of the liege lord beloved little reserved he of news that was known who the nest cliff did travel but he truly discoursed to all that could hear him now the free giving friend lord of the folk of the wedders the folk prince of gate men is fast in his deathbed by the deeds of the dragon in deathbed abideth along with him lieth his life-taking foeman slain with knife wounds he was wholly unable to injure at all the ill-planning monster with bite of his sword edge we laugh is sitting offspring of wistan up over beowulf earl o'er another whose end day hath reached him head watch holdeth o'er heroes unliving for friend and for foeman the folk now expecteth a season of strife when the death of the folk king to frank men and frisians in far lands is published the war hatred waxed warm gainst the hugh men when he alack came with an army of vessels faring to friesland where the frank men in battle humbled him and bravely over might accomplished that the mail-clad warrior must sink in the battle fell mid his folk troop no fret gems presented to the atheling to earlmen i was denied us merrywing's mercy the men of the swede lands for truce or for truth trust i but little but widely twas known that near ravenswood ongen theo sundered hathkin the hretling from life joys when for pride overweening the war shiftlings first did seek the gaet men with savage intentions early did ochair as age-laden father old and terrible give blow in requital killing the sea-king the queen-mother rescued the old one his consort deprived of her gold onilla's mother and ochair's also and then followed the feud nursing foeman till hardly reaved of their ruler they ravenswood entered then with vast numbers forces he assaulted the remnant weary with wounds woe often promised the life-long night to the sad-hearted war troop said he at morning would kill them with edges of weapons some on the gallows for glee to the fowls aid came after to the anxious in spirit at dawn of the day 
after hearlax bugle and trumpet sound heard they when the good one proceeded and faring followed the flower of the troopers chapter forty one the messenger's retrospect the blood-stained trace of swedes and gaet men the death rush of war men widely was noticed how the folk with each other feud did awaken the worthy one went then with well-beloved comrades old and dejected to go to the fastness on Gentheo earl upward then turned him of hearlax battle he'd heard on inquiry the exultant one's prowess despaired of resistance with earls of the ocean to be able to struggle gainst sea-going sailors to save the hoard treasure his wife and his children he fled after thenceward old neath the earth wall then was offered pursuance to the braves of the swede men the banner to hearlac they fared then forth o'er the field of protection when the hrethling heroes hedgewood had thronged them then with edges of irons was on Gentheo driven the grey haired to tarry that the troop ruler had to suffer the power solely of eover wolf then wildly with weapon assaulted him one read his son that for swinge of the edges the blood from his body burst out in currents forth neath his hair he feared not however grey-headed shifling but speedily quitted the wasting wound stroke with worse exchange when the king of the thane troop thither did turn him the wise mooded son of one red was powerless to give a return blow to the age hoary man but his head shielding helmet first hewed he to pieces that flecked with gore perforce he did totter fell to the earth not fay was he yet then but up did he spring though an edge wound had reached him then he alax vassal valiant and dauntless when his brother lay dead made his broad-bladed weapon giant sword ancient defence of the giants bound o'er the shield wall the folk prince succumbed then shepherd of people was pierced to the vitals there were many attendants who bound up his kinsmen carried him quickly when occasion was granted that the place of the slain they were suffered to manage this pending one hero plundered the other his armour of iron from on Gentheo ravished his hard sword hilt in and helmet together the old one's equipment he carried to hearlac he the jewels received and rewards mid the troopers graciously promised and so did accomplish the king of the wedders requited the war rush hraethel's descendant when home he repaired him to eover and wolf with wide lavish treasures to each of them granted a hundred of thousands in land and rings wrought out of wire none upon mid-earth needed to twit him with gifts he gave him when glory they conquered and to eover then gave he his one only daughter the honour of home as an earnest of favour that's the feud and hatred as we night will happen the anger of earthmen the earls of the swede men will visit on us when they hear that our leader lifeless is lying he who long time protected his horde and kingdom against hating assailers who on the fall of the heroes defended of yore the deed mighty shieldings did for the troopers what best did avail them and further moreover hero deeds accomplished now is haste most fitting that the lord of the liegemen we look upon yonder and that one carry on journey to death pyre who ring presents gave us not aught of it all shall melt with the brave one there's a mass of bright jewels gold beyond measure gruesomely purchased and ending it all ornament rings too bought with his life these fire shall devour flame shall cover no earl man shall wear a jewel memento nor beautiful virgin have on her neck rings to adorn her but wretched in spirit bereaved of gold gems she shall oft with others be exiled and banished since the leader of liegemen hath laughter forsaken mirth and merriment hence many a war spear cold from the morning shall be clutched in the fingers heaved in the hand 
no harp music's sound shall waken the warriors but the wan coated raven fain over fay ones freely shall gabble shall say to the eagle how he sped in the eating when the wolf to his companion he plundered the slain so the high-minded hero was rehearsing these stories loathsome to hear he lied as to few of words and of words all of the war troop arose then neath the eagle's cape sadly betook them weeping and woeful the wonder to look at they saw on the sand then soulless a-lying his slaughter-bed holding he who rings had given them in days that were done then the death-bringing moment was come to the good one that the king very warlike wielder of wedders with wonder death perished first they beheld there a creature more wondrous the worm on the field in front of them lying the foe man before them the fire spewing dragon ghostly and grisly guessed in his terrors was scorched in the fire as he lay there he measured fifty of feet came forth in the night-time to rejoice in the air thereafter departing to visit his den he in death was then fastened he would joy in no other earth-hollowed caverns there stood round about him beakers and vessels dishes were lying and dear valued weapons with iron rust eaten as in earth's mighty bosom a thousand of winters where they had rested that mighty bequest then with magic was guarded gold of the ancients that earl men not any the ring hall could touch save ruling god only sooth king of victories gave whom he wished to he is earth folk's protector to open the treasure e'en to such among mortals as seemed to him proper chapter forty two we laugh sad story the hoard carried off then twas seen that the journey prospered him little who wrongly within had the ornaments hidden down neath the wall the warden earth slaughtered some few of the folk troop the feud then thereafter was hotly avenged tis a wonder where when the strength famous trooper has attained to the end of life days allotted then no longer the man may remain with his kinsmen where mead cups are flowing so to beowulf happened when the ward of the barrow assaults he sought for himself had no knowledge how his leaving this life was likely to happen so to doomsday famous folk leaders down did call it with curses who accomplished it there that that man should be ever of ill deeds convicted confined in foul places fastened in hell bonds punished with plagues who this place should e'er ravage he cared not for gold rather the wielder's favour preferred he first to get sight of we laugh discourse then Hunstan his son oft many earl men on one man's account must sorrow endure as to us it hath happened the liege lord beloved we could little prevail on kingdom's keeper counsel to follow not to go to the guardian of the gold hoard but let him lie where he long was lie in his dwelling till the end of the world met we a destiny hard to endure the hoard has been looked at been gained very grimly too grievous the fate that the prince of the people pricked to come thither i was therein and all of it looked at the building's equipments since access was given me not kindly at all entrance permitted within under earth wall hastily seized i and held in my hands a huge weighing burden of hoard treasures costly thither outbear them to my liege lord beloved life was yet in him and consciousness also the old one discoursed then much and mournfully commanded to greet you bade that remembering the deeds of your friend lord ye build on the fire hill of corpses a lofty burial barrow broad and far famous as mid world dwelling warriors he was widely most honoured while he revelled in riches let us rouse us and hasten again to see and seek for the treasure the one beneath wall the way i will show you that close ye may look at the ring gems sufficient and gold in abundance 
let the beer with promptness fully be fashioned when forth we shall come and lift we our lord then where long he shall tarry well beloved warrior neath the wielder's protection then the son of winstan bade orders be given mood valiant man to many of heroes holders of homesteads that they thither from far leaders of liegemen should look for the good one with wood for his pyre the flame shall now swallow the wan fire shall wax the warrior's leader who the reign of the iron often abided when sturdily hurled the storm of the arrows leapt o'er linden wall the lance rendered service furnished with feathers followed the arrow now the wise mood of son of winstan did summon the best of the braves from the band of the ruler seven together neath the enemy's roof he went with the seven one of the heroes who fared at the front a fire blazing torchlight bare in his hand no lot then deceived who that horde should havoc when the hero earl saw it lying in the cavern uncared for entirely rusting to ruin they rued then but little that they hastily hence hauled out the treasure the dear valued jewels the dragon eke pushed they the worm o'er the wall let the wave currents take him the waters enwind the ward of the treasures their wood and gold and wain was uploaded a mass unmeasured the men leader off they the hero hoary to wales ness was carried chapter forty three the burning of beowulf the folk of the gert men got him then ready a pile on the earth strong for the burning behung with helmets hero knights targets and bright shining burnies as he begged they should have them then wailing war heroes their world famous chieftain their liege lord beloved laid in the middle soldiers began then to make on the barrow the largest of dead fires dark o'er the vapour the smoke cloud ascended the sad roaring fire mingled with weeping the wind roar subsided till the building of bone it had broken to pieces hot in the heart heavy in spirit they mood sad lamented the men leader's ruin and mournful measures the much grieving widow the men of the wedders made accordingly a hill on the height high and extensive of sea-going sailors to be seen from a distance and the brave one's beacon built where the fire was in ten days space with a wall surrounded it as wisest of world folk could most worthily plan it they placed in the barrow rings and jewels all such ornaments as erst in the treasure war-mooded men had won in possession the earnings of earlmen to earth they entrusted the gold to the dust where it yet remaineth as useful to mortals as in foregoing eras round the dead mound road then the doughty in battle bands of all twelve of the chiefs of the people more would they mourn lament for their ruler speak in measure mention him with pleasure waited his worth and his warlike achievements mightily commended as tis meet one praise his liege lord in words and love him in spirit when forth from his body he fares to destruction so lamented mourning the men of the geats fond loving vassals the fall of their lord said he was kindest of kings under heaven gentlest of men most winning of manner friendliest to folk troops and fondest of honour end of section fourteen End of Beowulf by Unknown Translated by John Leslie Hall